Okay, starting recording. Make sure everything. Oh, there we go. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? The Jack Nerd here, oh, oh. and welcome back to the good old podcast land. Um, it's it's gonna be it's just gonna be uh, myself and Jerky Man for a little bit, and hopefully uh, Starpool jumps jumps on them later. He's got some stuff going on, but um. I mean, we're doing this. We, I know Sunday's a little weird day for doing the show. It's just that a lot of things happened yesterday, and I just know we've been so cotton picking busy. I mean, uh, I've been busy. I know uh, Jerky Man has, and same with Starpool. But uh, this is uh, me and uh, Jerky Man. How you been, buddy? And what did you get this month? Well, I have been busy with my new job, getting the hang of things transferred from one job where I work at to a new job within the same place that I work at. So I've just been busy getting the hang of things with that and just getting back to a new, a new normal, you know, because when I got fired, it took me a little over a month to find a new job. And then I found a new job and I had to get, uh, kind of get my life back, back to some kind of a new normal, which I think I have now. So, but uh, now that things are going to a new normal, since our last podcast, what I have gotten and pre-ordered, last time I talked about Call Sign Longbow, third-party G.I. Joe O-Ring figures, I got those pre-ordered, so those are on the way, and I got Masterpiece Sideswipe couple weeks ago or a while ago actually and then i've got retro o-ring gi joe figures pre-ordered from hasbro i got i gotta click on the website here i got the transformers collaborative gi joe mashup bumblebee all striker that comes with the o-ring version of lonzo stalker wilkinson and then the other one was uh, Cobra Stinger Retro O-Ring. And then the other one was the, if I can find it here, G.I. Joe Retro Collection Duke versus Cobra Commander O-Ring figures. That's going to come out in November. So I got those pre-ordered from Hasbro. In the meantime, I did finally get uh, MP30 Ratchet is on the way in the mail along with G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Officer and Zartan figures. And I also, at the last minute, found Ghostbusters Afterlife Fright Features Phoebe Spangler. It was the very last one eBay had at the time I ordered her. So I got Trevor Spangler and Phoebe Spangler together right next to the uh, reissue Kenner Egon Spangler action figure that I got two years ago. Nice. So they got, I got like a little Spangler family reunion going on. So I got those ordered slash in the mail and pre-orders, pre-orders from Hasbro on the way. And then uh, my plan is next year for my birthday and... During and even after Dairy Con, I got a list of things I'm going to get for my collection. And then I got those ready to go. Because some of the stuff from Hasbro and Takara aren't going to be ready till next year in right. the, the winter and spring. So, and then, oh, I know my plan is to later this month order Deformation Space third-party masterpiece starscream with the upgrade kit nice so he's looking g1 accurate as possible and then the ds sky warp at some point either this year or next year for my birthday i'll pull the trigger and order him with the upgrade kit because if you get one of them may as well get all three right right i mean mean, Uh, with those masterpiece figures yeah, I mean, it's the it's the original Seekers, I mean... Well, it's the same thing, if you're going to get one of the Conehead Seekers, you got to get all three, you might as well. 
Exactly. And I think that goes for the same for the Rainmakers, too, like Sunstorm, Acid Storm, Ion Storm. But at the same time, I mean, do you really... I mean, those were kind of like those background characters anyway, and they never really really did much except for the the one episode when they did the acid rain see i know there was sunstorm acid storm i was trying to think who the other one was so it's ion storm yep ion storm and then there's another one hot link and he's just a he's just another repaint of a seeker too isn't there a female seeker i thought hasbro did Flip. a female seeker flipstream Oh, flip! Oh, that's right. Is there a masterpiece version of her? No, there is not. And I also, I think there should be. Oh, let's see. I'm curious what I on. I know people have done customs, but oh, he's oh, so Ion Storm is basically just a uh, masterpiece Thundercracker, but in a darker blue. Right. Hmm. Because I've got a third-party Acid Storm and an animated Sunstorm in my collection, but I don't have any of the Masterpiece ones. Nice. nice. Although the, ma- the Masterpiece Sunstorm looks pretty good. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. But awesome. anyway, anyways, so... No, that's what I've got since the last podcast. Um, oh, I... Take that back. I did get the retro G.I. Joe Cobra officer and trooper O-ring set in the mail uh, last week. I got I got those ready to go. I'm trying to think what else did I get? I did, uh, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, that's all I got since the last podcast that we did so that's all i got i'm good on that end awesome awesome well uh as for me um uh, i've been busy with working uh working in a 40 hour uh 80 hour uh 40 hour job uh monday through friday um bi-weekly i mean pay the pay is really good i just been it's also benefiting benefiting for me for the future um i've just been busy man just been busy but i've been trying to make sure i keep working on the crossover and uh Oh, it's it's a it's a it's a pain in the ass. It really is. But I just hope I can get that done at least before next month, if not next month, and hopefully before I before I leave. But um, but yeah, overall, uh, I kind of did something different uh, for the for the show. I might stick with it. Different kind of setup. Uh, I was getting tired of that glare in the window. So um, I'm gonna ask uh, the audience, uh, the subscribers, what you guys think of the new setup. Is it? good is it bad um and also just do the channel plug and guys uh if you guys wanted to like subscribe uh comment you know that that helps the channel and uh for the fanboys fanboy studios and the f team podcast to grow into a much more um larger channel because we're, we're a small channel and uh if it wasn't for you guys um being the lifeblood there, there would be no f team or the, or fanboy studio but as for stuff i got recently um Jesus, I don't know where to fucking start right now. Um, I guess uh, for, uh, one of the very one of them, I, some I got not too long ago was the uh, masterpiece knockoff hound. Um, not a bad figure. Um, very very light. Honestly, I think he's a lot lighter than Gun Dog, but very tune mm. aesthetic. Very very tune. Very um, very G one, which is what the a lot of the tune stuff is um, is nowadays, and very cool figure. Posability is really good. I like it. Feels good in hand. Um, like I said, very light. But uh, I mean, for only only what sixty bucks off of um, off Show Z store. I mean, hey, can't really go wrong with that, especially if you want a masterpiece hound in your collection. Um, well, I got. I'm gonna make plans to get masterpiece uh, Trailbreaker. At some point, I don't know. I might wait and get him for my birthday next year. Sure, definitely, I got, I got, I got that. I got him on pre-order, and then I, by the time that gets here, I will be not here. So, um, and uh, I also got this guy. This is the uh, cool peak for the Raidatron combiner. Um, very cool. Um, I mean, he's got good posability. He's the um, he's one of the arms 
So Green Zone will be here probably in the next couple of days, and then I might do a stream uh, if I have time, which I probably won't, um, to maybe combine all of them. And um, continue to on the threat of Transformers. I uh, recently got a uh, knockoff uh, movie Bumblebee. Um, this is like it's a it's a good knockoff it really is, has that that it's all painted through and through it's got that gloss wax finish off a off a vehicle which i think is really nice and on top of it just feels really it, it's it's not bad in hand not not bad in hand at all um as for marvel slash gi joe stuff well having this new job i uh made some uh recent purchases uh i guess we will start with um i got teen groot from uh thor love and thunder have not seen the movie yet and uh the sculpt work on it looks looks really good i i think it's i think it's a lot better than um some of the the older group figures they 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 have done um and then of course you got the marvel marvel legends uh ravager thor you know with the uh with the Rocking the uh, leather vest and then uh, Stormbreaker, definitely a different look and aesthetic they're going for this movie. I feel like it's very '80s. It's got an '80s feel to it, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. And I also got uh, Jane Foster Thor, but uh, as you can see, she's missing a cape. I'm actually doing some modifications and customizations to her. I've actually uh, replaced the discs. Uh, the Stormbreaker. I mean, Stormbreaker. The Mjolnir that she comes with is just too oversized, so I used. Uh, an SHF one, I had um, an extra SHF, and I think it actually kind of balances the figure out just a little bit better. Um, also, I got uh, a couple of Mayfex figures. I got the um, Mayfex Endgame uh, Fat Thor. Yeah. So, pr pretty cool figure. I, I honestly, I did not expect it to be what it is. Um, it, I mean, I mean, the Stormbreakers, it comes with two Mjolnir's two Stormbreakers, and the Stormbreakers are bigger than the Infinity War Stormbreaker, which uh, I gave to the uh, Love and Thunder Thor because it just it looks better. And on top of that, the one that that Thor figure came with was just like really cheap plastic. So I'm like, I want something a little more solid. But um, but overall, you can see that there's just a size difference between this Mjolnir and the other one. I think I did share some photos on the uh, the chat, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, the other day when Haley and I we were we were we were uh, hanging out last weekend during Fourth of July, just just her and I went to uh, went to Target and we went to everywhere in Janesville, Walmart, t Target. We were just kind of just bored. We just wanted to get out of the house. We pretty much did a spending spree. I bought some stuff and she bought some stuff. And uh, I was able to pick up a uh, another Defender Strange because the First one I have, I am turning into Zombie Dead Strange from Multiverse of Madness. Nice. So I, I really, I really like. And I, the funny thing is, when I bought this figure, it didn't have the effect, the effect piece that came with, which, with, with, which was the ring, right? And so I went up to the uh, register, right? And I was talking to them. I'm, I'm like, Hey, this doesn't have the ring. Is there any way we can get a discount on it? It's missing a piece. The box is open. It was missing that ring, and they're like. Yeah, we can drop it down to fifteen percent. And I'm like, done. And I walked out of there with, walked out of there with this figure. And of course, it came with the hand. So uh, I'm gonna do the same treatment that I did when I first customized the first one, which is a uh, much more of a matted red, a little bit of the gold, uh, gold, fin uh, the little gold, uh, gold lines, the darker hair, the facial, uh, facial hair, the goatee, and all, uh, well, more of the beard that he had in that movie. Um, and uh, today, well, actually, well, I'll get to today in a minute here. Uh, also, recently, I got this beautiful Mayfex Mark 85. This thing is so clean. The red is just popping. The gold, the silvers. I mean, this is a captivating piece. And honestly, this puts the, uh, I had the SH figure arts. This blows that one out of the water because it's just it just feels so good. I like the posability, the the stock head, that, the unmasked uh, stock head it comes with, it, or the Tony Stark one. It looks it looks really good too. But I, for one, I appreciate what the third party um, people do for a lot of these un, for 
uh, the 3D printed type of masked heads or unmasked heads and so on and so forth. I like those better. But overall, this is just a beautiful, a beautiful piece. I It's actually, I think it's one of my favorite um, Iron Man suits that um, I got recently. And um, I posted some uh, photos on, oh, wait, uh, oh, yeah, I posted some photos on the F Team uh, podcast today. I actually went to a small toy show uh, that was hosted by, uh, uh, I can't pronounce his fucking name. Hold on a second. Uh, fuck me. Um, um, Timothy Satch, Sat, Statter Jr. over from Nowhere Collectibles, and he was actually a guest on our show, and that was our uh, that was our guest from DairyCon. They had a Hold on a second. Hello there. Hi, bud. Hey, uh, sorry I got a little salty earlier. I um. You're good. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, eat a Snickers. Have, uh, eat a Snickers. Uh, fuck off. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, it's not—it's not really whether I'm hungry or not. It's just like I said, you know, it's been a bit of a long day, work and craziness, and people, you know, either telling me, "Hey, I ordered two of this drink," when they really didn't, or I'm too stupid to, uh, uh, or too deaf rather, to hear them say, "Hey, I wanted two of this." I'm like, "Oh, well, I feel stupid." So yeah, fun. Anyway, uh, how far into the show did you guys get? Well, I, I'm still talking about what I got. I mean, I literally talked about uh, my Transformers I got. Um, actually, almost done with with my intro, but uh, and my stupid circuit breaker thing, my my uh, power surge protector kind of started making beeping sounds. But back mm-hmm. to what I was talking about, I also got um, uh, the uh, toy show I went to today. I actually picked up um, Supreme uh, Supreme Strange. Um, I actually started doing some uh, painting and a little bit of customizing on there just to kind of bring out some colors and some separation in there. Uh, very cool, very cool figure. Very and uh, I th- honestly, I think it's one of the best "What If" episodes. Uh, was the uh, "What If uh, Doctor Strange Lost His Heart Instead of His Hands"? Um, also, I picked up uh, American Chavez. Good choice. Good choice. Pretty, pretty a, nice figure. Yeah, I put you onto that figure. And of course, I had I found this guy, GI Joe Classified Firefly, and honestly, lucky, lucky bastard. It is it's a pretty nice figure, but man, that EOD stuff, man, that's like that's way too much. I mean, it's good thing it wasn't like full dress and uh, explosive ordnance disposable suits because those things are clunky. Those things are large. Um, that's what she said. Exactly. And on top of that, I also got some um, 112 scale uh, firearms from um, Grid Iron Studios, and uh, they're really nice. I mean, the magazines come out, and it's really cool. And I think I think there's one other thing I missed. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think I talked about it, but hold on a second. Did I talk about this guy yet? No. I don't think so. Holy crap. That is definitely a Bruticus. Oh yeah, I got the uh, Zeta Toys Bruticon, the uh, more, more of the kind of the tune accurate colors. But this thing is so cool. I love the the all the practical military vehicles on this. I mean, you got a Bradley, the Bradley tank, the Humvee. You got the uh, the helicopter, and of course uh, Onslaught being his uh, being an armored personnel carrier, and of course Blast Off is like the one thing that's oddity the oddity of this combiner. But overall, it is a beautiful piece. It is, I don't know what's better. I don't know if I like this better or Superion better. Maybe I like this better. I don't know. But overall, uh, Bruticus has one, been one of one of my favorite combiners. And Devastator is really not that bad either. But I have to get a Devastator sometime. But uh, yeah, that is uh, that is pretty much everything from the pat. Not only this month, but last month. So it was a lot of a lot of uh, catch up with uh, oh, a lot of figures, but um, anyways, moving on. Tyler, yes, sir. Been, buddy, and what the fuck did you get this month? 
Ah, what did I get this month? I think the question is, what did I not get this month? No, I'm just kidding. I didn't. I didn't buy a lot. Um. So, um, as far as what I got, I got the this amazing and hilarious bastard from Dorkside Toys. Thank you, Dorkside Toys, and thank you for not taking until September, like uh, your last um update said. But um, I got the SH Figure Arts Deadpool, and I love this thing. I would say it's better than the Marvel Legends, but not by much, because the Marvel Legends was really freaking good. But this pushes it the extra mile by making, uh, by like, uh, you know, adding some extra color breakup to the boots, um, the eye, the swap out eye gimmick, definitely the extra hands being more emotive. But Two major flaw. Well, in my case, there's a uh, well. Two major flaws. Um, one is there. There are some paint mishaps on mine. I mean, it's something I can't fix. I just haven't gotten around to fixing them. Like, there's a little um, a bit of stray black on the side of his head, and uh, if you kind of see with the uh, the happy eyes, it's not very. Uh, it's not lined up all the way um you can kind of see where it missed the mark on this eye which again i could fix that it's just for an 85 shift figure i shouldn't have to you know right. and and i also shouldn't i mean don't get me wrong car tony's uh, third party kits are uh, beautiful but should i have to buy a third party uh kit for this guy just for him to have guns no i shouldn't technically you shouldn't i mean I mean, I mean, look at the classified line. They, I mean, they first started with all the sci-fi weapons, but then now they, especially with Commando Snake Eyes, you know, he's got the more of the realistic weapons. And even with more releases that are coming out, they're they're straying away from that more of that science fiction stuff into a much more of a realistic feel of of firearms and weaponry. But yeah, you're right. You should not you should not yeah. buy a, a third party kit for Deadpool. I mean Deadpool should have came with his Hello Kitty bag. He should have came with his Desert Eagles. He should have came with an AR15. He he should have came with yeah. he should have came with his pony too. You know what? Uh and actually um I am going to sell off the Marvel Legends, but I'm going to keep the unicorn um because I mean unicorn. you kind of have to. Um but um that's actually one thing, now that you mention it, that's one thing I wish Jakar Tony would have included was the Hello uh, well, the Hello Kitty bag full of guns and ammo and whatnot. That would have been so cool. But then again, if all that uh, stuff was removable and that kind of thing, it probably would have upped the price. But at any rate, I mean, I can't wait to get the kit. Um, it's uh, probably in the middle of uh, getting prepped for shipping right now. Um, as far as anything else I've got this month, um, pretty much just uh, some supplies to try to clean some paint off and uh, – um, actually, I almost forgot my Dallas Fan Expo haul. Um, so I got the, um, I don't have her out, but I have the Black Series Asajj Ventress from Star Wars The Clone Wars, which my amazing and beautiful and sweet uh, girlfriend got me. And I'm very appreciative of that. And I will, uh, I will gladly take pictures of uh, Ventress when it cools the hell off outside um so i got ventress i got george lucas and stormtrooper disguise i mean and I, i'm very glad i have them because here's my rule if you have a marvel collection you have to have stan lee in some shape or form in it whether it be a funko pop a hot toy a marvel legends it doesn't matter you got to have stan lee in some capacity and for Star Wars, that's the same with George Lucas. And honestly, I feel the same for Dave Filoni, but unfortunately, I did not get Trapper Wolf, which I'll have to either track down or maybe I'll just have to say screw it and make one, which I really don't want to do, but this is what it is if I do. But um, so I got those two Star Wars figures. I got, and thanks to John for putting me onto this one, asshole. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I got the G.I. Joe Classified Series Commando Snake Eyes and Timber 2-pack because there was a couple I wanted the boost there. I'm like, John has me drooling over that fucking 2-pack. I better get it. And so I did, and um, I do not regret it because 
The only thing I don't like about it is for some reason the right bicep on my Commando Snake Eyes pops off easily. I don't know why. It is what it is, though. Maybe I'll have to tighten it or something. But um, got that two pack, and then I got the Marvel Legends Groot from Thor: Love and Thunder, and um, I definitely need a Groot. And um, uh, now I have him and Gamora. Now I need to get the rest of the Guardians. And um, I think the last figure that I picked up recently was the. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, the Marvel Legends uh, re-release of the uh, Winter Soldier when they uh, re-release him with the photo reel for uh, the flashbacks in uh, yep. uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And uh, so I got him and Groot from the same guy, and uh, and that was really cool. And as far as stuff that's not figure-related, um, I was nearly finished with my custom James, and I messed up. I grabbed the white spray paint instead of the clear um the clear gloss so my dad was awesome enough to get me uh and some new parts so that i can have not only a regular james but also i can customize uh continue customizing the uh these uh parts of the main body and the tender to make a uh maybe i'll dual use it as like a quarry and christmas james so because he did work at the quarry so you know um, other than that, I, yeah, other than that, I don't think I got anything else, and if I did, um, I'm probably forgetting, but, you know, I've, even if I did forget, it's all right, because there's always next time where I can bring it up, or not, I don't know, I don't care, anyway, um, moving on. Yep, it is time for some news. First off, I mean it's, it's been it's been a pretty good movie uh, year for the movie so far, but um, it has been. I feel the need for speed. One of Tom, one of the biggest Tom Cruise films ever has to hit hit the billion dollar mark. Um, for one, I really enjoy Top Gun. Um, it was very patriotic, had a great plot and no wolf politics. Just shows how Tom Cruise is one of the last great movie stars, and. It just blows my mind that, you know, this this movie that came out of nowhere. I, I mean, I saw the original Top Gun. Chris, have you seen the original? I have. So when, when, you, when you first saw the original, what, what was your honest opinion about it? What, what did you feel that did you did you think it would need a sequel or not really? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those movies where it can go with a sequel and then it's at the same time it doesn't have to go with the sequel but i guess tom cruise figured out a way to have a story good enough that it could be a sequel to the original slash first one i think the first one is good i haven't had a chance to see uh maverick yet i plan on doing so when i get a chance but um the original top gun it's good i just wish there was more like battle scenes in it like more aerial combat because there's other uh, military type of movies that have aerial combat. Um, and what I just think that's, that's the only complaint I have about Top Gun is it just needed more aerial combat. But besides that, it's overall, it's a really good movie. It's got a good cast and, um, from what I've been hearing, Top Gun Maverick, it's supposed to be really good. So at some point when I get a chance, I will watch it. And um, other than that, I don't really have a whole lot else to say about um, Top Gun other than I'm hearing a lot of good things about the new one. It, it, is, it, is, re- it is really good. And, you know, there, there's the story that they, the direction and the story they did for that was really good. Um, there is a lot more, a lot more, air, like you're saying about aerial, uh, aerial combat, aerial scenes. There is a lot more. And, and it's funny, I was watching like some behind the scenes stuff. They actually had an F-18 Super Hornet fly at above about 30, 30 feet from the ground. They brought in a certain pilot to fly that low. And the director was saying that, that you could feel it. You could just feel everything. There were, I heard there was not a lot of CGI in it. 
And uh, the movie didn't really have a big budget. I think it was like, a, what, only $185 million, give or take? And it soared to, what, almost a billion dollars in the box office. It's insane. It's, it's a good movie. Uh, Tyler, I don't know. I know. I don't. I, I know you like Star Wars, but if you want to watch anything with like aerial combat, like from that, you can maybe try to figure out if you would like something like that. It's a high recommend, and anyone who hasn't seen it, I recommend it. Um. Anyways, uh, that's all I have to say about that. But um, uh, moving okay. right along. Yeah, because, like, uh, I just want to say real quick, I haven't seen the new Top Gun Maverick movie. I have seen the first one. Oh, you have? But, and, yeah, and that one was good. Um, I guess I just haven't seen the second one yet. Uh, I probably will uh, maybe want to, if it pops up on, like, uh, uh, would, it, would it pop up on Paramount Plus or HBO Max? You Paramount. Think? It's a Paramount. So it'll be Paramount Plus. Uh, I heard that Tom Cruise, they want to break at least one more record before they put it on streaming. I don't know what that record is yet, okay. but they want to. I heard that they want to break one more record before they put it on streaming. But yeah. Uh, yeah. but moving right along, probably one of the most. Not only that, okay. I mean, Top Gun was an anticipated film of mine. It really was, and I, I never saw the original, but when I did, it was really cool. Um, and then watched the second one. But one of the one of the most highly anticipated movies that we've talked about. For so long, even after Multiverse of Madness, even during Multiverse of Madness, was Jurassic World Dominion. Was it everything that we asked for in our Jurassic movie? What did you all think? And what does this mean for the future of, of the franchise, spinoffs, a show? We'll start. Um, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, we'll start. I was going to say, Chris. Um. No, I thought it was great seeing ca- the cast of the original Jurassic Park with the cast of Jurassic World work together. Um, Jeff Goldblum continues to age like a very fine wine because uh, seeing his earlier work when he just started acting uh, for the first time as an actor, he looked v- like sickly looking. He just looked kind of rough, but now he looks fantastic. I had fun watching it. Quinn and I, we went to a AMC theater to see it. We enjoyed it. We had fun. It was a good movie. Um, I think the way it ends, it's a perfect way to conclude everything that happened before hand in the series. It doesn't need a sequel. It doesn't really need a sequel or a spinoff or a TV show or anything like that. It's, it's a very good way to just wrap up everything because at the very end of it, you see um, how everything ends, and it, it's pretty obvious that everything's taken care of, and everyone can move forward away from uh, Jurassic World and everything else that happens in the movie. So it does have a happy ending, uh, an optimistic happy ending that basically shows that, yeah, we have we have to live with dinosaurs in certain parts of the world, but it'll be fine well it'll work out somehow so um like i said it doesn't yeah, need a sequel it, like... everything everything has wrapped up perfectly so it's a great way to conclude the series yeah because living with dinosaurs it's not like a t-rex will just jump out of nowhere and bite your head off well remember in the movie they've got special like uh Paddocks preservations or nature preserves just for those dinosaurs so that way they can the dinosaurs can do their thing and they don't have to bother anyone um outside of those nature preserves true so because that's one of the points of the movie towards the end is it's just it's better to round them all up and put them in a specialized nature preserve and just leave them alone yeah. So, which that way it makes it easier for everyone else not to have to worry about dealing with some random dinosaur that's going to hit you on the side of the road or like the equivalent that it that a deer would. Right. You know, getting hit by a deer, getting hit by a dinosaur. So, no, I like that 
that part of the movie. So, cause it, cause that's one of the things that made this movie work really well and help wrap everything up was put the dinosaurs in a nature preserve. That way we don't have to pave the way for any kind of a sequel later on. Right. So, but, uh, yeah. But do you think there's ever going to be like uh, another movie in the future or a spinoff? Like if they do probably do some, well, you know what? I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. Um, can't really imagine why they would want to. I mean, it's not really needed because, like I've been saying, everything's wrapped up, you know, at a, at a point where you don't need to make another sequel. It doesn't need to continue on because you've got comic books and a TV sh- an animated show for kids on Netflix and previous movies before Jurassic World 3 – that right there is already enough to show you what happens in the Jurassic Park slash world uh, continuity. So it doesn't really need it. It doesn't need any sequels to keep going. Right, right. Um, Tyler? I pretty much agree with Chris. The only... Because, like, I'm not... Really huge into the Jurassic uh, Park or World. Um, I uh, I honestly, if I did see the Jurassic uh, Park movies, it's been years uh, since I've seen them. But um, but um, I will say this: um, if they were to uh, do anything else with it, movie wise, they'd probably just have to rebooted and i really hope they don't because because look we have dc multiverses marvel multiverses all that shit uh transformers multiverses there's even a possible uh star wars multiverse coming since uh we have the world between worlds from rebels and dave filoni um and john favreau have been you know uh the masterminds behind stuff like the mandalorian ahsoka book or uh i think even book of boba fett you know so on and so forth so um i think uh so whether uh so i mean whether there's a star wars multiverse coming or not we don't need a we don't need any more kind of multiverse type stuff because we already got plenty of that with transformers and then marvel and dc and god knows whatever else uh probably the boys as well um so, in my opinion, they don't need to reboot it, but there's there's always that at least slight chance that they will. So, I mean, good point. Um, I I feel like and now now that you know you guys, now that we're talking about this, I I feel that you no, know, Chris is right that everything was the best. So it was a way to end it, and I love how they brought the original cast back. I liked the action. I liked the story. I liked the the reasons of the certain the uh, the, the Maisie character of what was all about what was involved with her. But um, overall, I don't think they should they they sh- there there should not be any more movies uh, spin off. Um, their their uh, Camp Cretaceous series is having their final season this year. And uh, yeah, that's 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 pretty. That's pretty much about it. But um, moving right along here. Well, hello there. General Kenobi, you are a bold one. (laughs) So we are going to talk, discuss a little bit about Kenobi. What would you all think of it? And is there a season two potential? Okay, season two potential? Yes. In my opinion, at least. Um, um, was it good? You bet your sweet ass uh, it was good, because holy crap. It, okay. Well, first of all, I don't know if you got, well, John, I know you haven't seen Re- uh, Rebels. Chris, I don't know if you've seen Rebels, but who who can know be uh, the best, Maul or Vader? Who mm, fuck? Vader. Hmm. I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking Maul, but Vader's was a close second. I don't know. 
Um, plus, uh, Maul's more, uh, Maul's Kenobi was a bit more of a meme. Um, but anyway, um, maybe I'm just biased, but at any rate, um, okay. Um, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, wait, can we talk about spoilers? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if any of you are a bum and haven't seen the, um, the, uh, uh, the series, go watch it and then come back, uh, because we're talking about spoilers. And if you want to cry, well, cry. Anyway, um, so I loved the fight between Vader and Obi-Wan, where kind of like Ahsoka did in Rebels with Vader, a chunk of his uh, mask came off, and you can see, like, literally half Vader, half Anakin, and and you can hear both the computer-generated James Earl Jones voice and the um, Hayden Christensen voice, and I loved that he said, I'm not your failure, Obi-Wan, and... I don't know, and this is just uh, this is just what I'm guessing. I think Anakin was because Vader and Anakin are two different people living in the same body. It's like uh, it's kind of it's in a way multiple personality disorder where uh, just like I said, in a way where it's like you know Vader's the one in charge because you know Anakin uh, went down the wrong path. It kind of got fucked up. Um, and then, um, and, and so Anakin just kind of peers in uh, here and there trying to, you know, um, sorry, I'm trying to think as I'm speaking, um, Anakin is trying to come out, whereas Vader's trying to suppress him. And I feel like, um, Anakin felt bad for uh, for doing the things he did, and and when he was fi- and when that chunk of his helmet came off, it was interesting that I feel like he came out through Vader and said, "I'm not your failure, Obi Wan," because his eye, because if you saw his eye, it switched colors. Like when Anakin's in control, they're blue, but. If it's Vader, they switch to yellow, and and it it's just interesting how how they did that because you know um, I I don't know it's just so cool and so interesting how they were able to do that and it made sense um, and do I hope there's a season three? Absolutely. Uh, would I be uh, can or sorry, season two. Excuse me. Uh, would I love for there to be a season two? Absolutely. Um, if there isn't, though, I feel like we're in a good closing spot for Obi Wan. Um, but the only question that I personally have, and I'm sure a lot of people do, is so. Wh- okay, so Leia n- uh, knows about Obi Wan when she's ten. And nine years later, she's asking for Obi Wan's help. Why didn't she say anything about, "Hey, you you help me, um, you help save me from these kidnappers. I need your help again." Instead of just saying, "Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope." But then again, the only thing I could think of with that is maybe um, she didn't have enough time to say the rest or mention that. There is a theory going around regarding with that where both mm-hmm. and Leia have a sworn uh, secrecy sworn to secrecy about this because they do I not see that they do not want they do not want to know what Obi-Wan did for the Organas and yeah. Obi-Wan wants to stay remain hidden and watch over Luke so I can see that honestly so yeah it's like a theory going around the ro- the reason why that they they only said that with, with what she said in the original movie and have that retconned was saying that she that she only knew Obi Wan Kenobi through her father during the Clone Wars, even though she knows that he that he also helped her in this in the situation that she ended up herself in when she was ten years old. Right. 
Yeah, and honestly, that that does make sense. But hopefully, I do hope that uh, eventually Disney and Lucasfilm will kind of, you know, specifically say, like, you know, hey, that fan theory is correct or whatever. But, I mean, with it being Disney, I don't, and with them, you know, being in charge of literally everything, I don't really know if they'll do that because Disney can be, you know. Right. Chris, what did you think? Um, I thought it was really good for like a as a mini series type of show. It was really good. Great to see an Ian McGregor come back play Obi Wan. Um, I have to politely disagree with Tyler. I think it doesn't need a season two. I think it works best as just a mini series to take place between uh, episode three and four. Um, it's perfect the way it is. Doesn't need uh, another season. It, it because sometimes less is more, and it usually works out True. for the better. So, yeah. but other than that, it was really fun to watch. Everyone that worked on it and starred in it did a great job. Um, it was like it was almost like um, like each episode of the show was a chapter in a book. You know. Like in a old, like in a previous Star Wars novel of some kind, but the, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of other people did too. So no, it was a good show. They, it was it did a really good job. Yeah, and even though I didn't watch every single episode, I did watch that final fight. And honestly, I think that was the best fight out of out of re- that came out of Star Wars recently. I mean, oh yeah, from from the sequel trilogy to. Um, to I mean I mean against lightsabers clashing. Let me rephrase that because when Luke Skywalker killed those uh, robot guys in the Mandalorian, that was cool. But uh, the Dark the, Troopers. The, yeah, Dark Troopers. But seeing the two Kenobi's Kenobi and Vader just clash, clash after clash in that fight, and just seeing Kenobi go full God mode and just completely wreck Vader and just you know and then. Because it's funny, I, before that before that final episode came out, I made a prediction that they're going to fight one more time, and Vader's going to get fucked oh everyone up, did, and then he was going to have that that half of his face showing. I, I like that both Hayden and um, e- uh, Wayne, e- Wayne McGregor. No, it was uh, uh, James Earl Jones. No, no, I was talking about Ewan McGregor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I like yeah Ewan McGregor. McGregor. They both came back. But one thing that doesn't make sense to me, right, is that mm-hmm. they did not did, did digitally de-age Ewain or Hayden when Hayden was his, in this Padawan co- uh, outfit. They didn't de-age him. Like, why didn't they de-age him if this is supposed to be pre-Clone This was pre-Clone Wars. Why didn't it's, they de-age both both of them to make it I'm, have make it have that more of that authentic feel of a flashback? I'm guessing because they probably felt like they didn't need to. Because I mean, yeah, they they are older than than how they were when they were working on Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. But I mean. I feel like it was fine the way it was because because I mean they I mean they hardly look different from how they were back then. I mean I mean at least to me, I don't know about Chris or anyone else, but yeah, to me, I mean they they look fine to me. Um and uh, I feel like if I mean they have gotten better with the deep fake stuff, but I don't think it's as spot on as it probably could be um, because, um, you know, th- because that's new technology for Lucasfilm to to work with. And um, and there were also some inconsistencies like like uh, Hayden, uh, when he played Anakin in the Operation Nightfall scenes or flashbacks, he didn't have the scar over his right eye and he didn't have the long hair. And I feel like that was definitely a uh, an ouchie in terms of inconsistency, because when you look at Anakin from not only the Clone Wars but also Revenge of the Sith, he has the scar from Ventress, you know, and 
that's the only nitpick uh, I have is those slight inconsistencies. Um, other than that, um, I um, yeah, I loved it, and um, and it's not that I was trying to say that it needed a season two. It really doesn't. You know, I do agree with Chris on that. It's just it would be cool if there was a season two. Um, but if there isn't, I'd be perfectly happy with with how it is as is. But if there is a season two, if if they somehow make a season two work and it makes sense, I would love to see Quinlan Voss come back because um, because Obi Wan knew Quinlan Voss from when he and Quinlan um, went to um, Now Hutta to hunt down uh, Zero the Hut after he was. Um, after he escaped from prison by the help of uh, Cad Bane and some other bounty hunters. Um, so to have Quinlan Voss show up would be so cool um, as like flashbacks or maybe, I don't know. I mean, it, it would be cool, but like I said, it would have to make sense. So. Right. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Really cool show, um, but uh, moving right along. Well, as more develops from the biggest flop from Disney Pixar's down goes down in the gutter, Lightyear. The question still pon- ponders: What made this film fail? Was it the plot? Chris Evans speaking to those that don't support a five-second certain scene. Then calling most of us dinosaurs and bigots, and that we will all die out. Tim Allen not reprising his role. Could it be that it doesn't follow our buzz from Toy Story? Has Disney just went in a direction that none of us really expected us to? We will talk about it, but we won't go into too much detail. Um, but overall i i i when this movie was first announced i really wanted to see it i i grew up with the original toy story franchise i wanted to see a different take but after everything that's been happening ever after hearing from the credits the critics uh what chris evans said and even not tim allen reprising his role i mean is it is it still really buzz is it still really buzz i mean i mean i i just i don't know i mean what do, what do you guys think? Well, first of all, it's got nothing to do with Disney being so-called woke or politically correct. It's got nothing to do with that. From what I saw, I think the reason why the movie failed is because um, there's other movies that are, that are out right now that it's competing against, both in streaming platforms and in movie theaters. So you got that factor. But I think, to me, the biggest factor was... Um, and I haven't seen the movie, but I did see the uh, the surprise plot twist in it that somebody had leaked out on a YouTube. I had seen that, and I was like, really? That's the plot twist in this movie? And I was like, wow. Disney and Pixar could have came up with something a hell of a lot better than that. And I don't understand this movie because, to me... When I was growing up with Toy Story, there was the spin-off Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, which was an animated TV sh- uh, TV series from like the very late 90s, very early 2000s around that time. Well, that was in the Toy Story universe, that's supposed to be the show that inspires Buzz Lightyear being made into a toy and being given to Andy. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the in-universe show that Andy would be watching, right? With with his toys of Buzz and Woody right. on his free time, like mm-hmm. Buzz Lightyear Star Command. Like that show makes a lot more sense than this movie did, you know? Because I saw that I won't say what it is, but I saw that plot twist that was on YouTube that somebody leaked out. I think I think I know what plot twist you're talking about. And um, I just thought it was really stupid. And I'm like, man, yeah. honestly, that, if you want to talk, been a hell of a lot better. I mean, sorry, I, 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 sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. It's just if you want to talk about that plot twist, I don't care because with how crappy the movie uh, has, uh, you know, been received, I probably won't go watch it. 
At least not until it comes on Disney Plus. I honestly, I think I know what plot twist you're talking about. Isn't it the plot twist where, uh, but it, the the guy, the Zerg, is actually a future version of Buzz. Yeah, that that shit didn't make any sense with me. It's like that doesn't make really, any sense to me. It it's just shooting itself in the foot. It's like, okay, that's not. That doesn't make any sense because originally Zerg is just his own separate character. Right. And Spuzz Lightyear Star Command has a little bit more background info on Zerg as a separate character. The whole him actually being Buzz Lightyear, Buzz Lightyear's future self older in a mechanical suit. That made that made. I watched that, and that just made no fucking sense whatsoever. I'm like, you guys spent all this time, energy, and money with this good quality of animation making a film, and this is your plot twist. Like, can you get your fucking money back? Like, th- th- come on. That all they had to do was make an, a Pixar animated movie that was directly based off of the animated TV show. Buzz Lightyear Star Command. That's all they would have had to do. And it probably would have worked out just fine. Right. But I, I, I just felt like this movie shot itself in the foot. It's I like, agree. It's like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, this I think, is your so-called MacGuffin? Get the fuck out of here. Right. I think, <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're right, Chris, because, you know, I, I just feel like... A lot, a lot of it is the plot, and then and now, and now it just feels like I think it's more a lot of it's the plot because a lot of people did not really like the direction it was going in, and and then now they're making it, they're now they're like thinking it's a, that five second certain scene, and then Chris Evans calling calling uh, people that don't support that five second scene of calling us bigots, dinosaurs, and et cetera, et cetera, and it's like, well. Okay, but you, I mean, we, we know what was the plot twist. I saw the clip on YouTube, too. I'm like, wait, what? I, I'm confused. What's what's going on here? See, and I would have been pissed if I had, like, if I had nothing, you know, if I was a little bit bored and I went out to a theater to see that, just out of curiosity. Man, as soon as I seen that, I would have got up and walked out. I'm like, I would have been like, are you fucking kidding me? This is bullshit. And I've... Never walked out of a, a movie in a theater in my whole life. But if I had gone to see this in the movie theater, this would have been the movie to do that on. Well, definitely, definitely. And then I think a lot of people would be asking for money back, like like that. Oh, man. Uh, I was like, no, I don't want my money. You can keep my money. I'd, I'd rather just take my happy ass and go home. Right. I, don't want, well, I, don't want, I wouldn't even want my money back. Fuck that shit. Right, exactly, exactly, and, and I'd rather I'd rather have the past whatever amount of time I spent of my life watching this movie. I'd rather have that back as opposed to the money. <laughs> Damn! Oh, dude! Because oh, fuck oh, this God. movie. Like, it's nothing against Chris Evans, and it's nothing against the animators that that animated this movie at Pixar. It's nothing against them. They're just doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's, it's the just, writer, technically. Yeah, it's just like they they could have figured something out a lot better than this. So, and, and again, it's nothing against Chris Evans. He's just doing what he's supposed to be doing. But, um, but still, I mean, I don't think Chris Evans should have said what he said because it's probably not just because of that, but it's like the plot elements too of the story also, and just there's just been so much backlash on this film. I mean. It, it, it could be because of that. It could be because of the, I mean, I think, honestly, I think you're right. It's probably because of it has a lot of it to do with the plot. Um, but still, Chris Evans shouldn't have said that because he just literally got done making this movie. And then he just does this whole this whole nonsense that he's done. And it's like, dude, are you for real? You're 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 just making you just making us want not want to see this movie even more now. Well, he's exactly. well, he's not he's not calling people who are against this movie for whatever reason he i think he's ju- he's just referring to people that are biased against 
same sex couples and that kind of thing. He's just calling those people bigots and whatnot. But he's not. He's not, he call, even... he's not calling everybody that stuff that he said. That's not what he's doing. He's just only referring to a certain amount of people. He's not. It's not like he's going around saying that to everybody, though. I mean, that's true, but here's the thing. He shouldn't even be saying that, because here's the thing. You know, he's an actor, okay? And, like, I mean, I have nothing against, you know, uh, you know, couples that are the same gender or whatever. I have nothing against that. But what, what I don't appreciate is when it's being forced. Now, if it was, like, written correctly... That's one thing, but if you're just gonna force it on us like that, uh, uh-uh. you need you need to stop that. Don't turn into the CW, please. Thank you. Well, I, that I can see. Like if you make it part of the if you make it part of the plot naturally, rather than just as opposed to shoving it down someone's throat, if you make it part of the part of the plot naturally, that works a lot better. Exactly. Storytelling wise. Instead of shoving that down someone's throat at the last second. Especially in a kid's movie, man. Come on. But, I mean, it it, it don't bother me any because it's like, I don't, I don't give a shit because I'm not going to see this movie anyways because of that shitty plot twist. Right, right, exactly. It's mainly just because of that shitty plot twist. And it's not the like, first time that, ha- that uh, Pixar screwed up or hasn't done really well. I mean, they've... I mean, you can't be a movie studio and or an animation studio and have made a series of movies. Is every single one of them going to be a hit? Fuck no. It's not always going to be the case. You're going to have some that are going to do really well, and they're going to have some that are going to do okay or absolutely tank at the box office and lose money on it. So Pixar is no different than anyone else in Hollywood. Right, but um, yeah, but whatever. So, so I, guess, I guess fuck that movie. I'm glad I didn't go see it. Yeah, yeah, but whatever, whatever the case may be, I mean, it's it's not gonna make its two the two hundred million dollars back or even more for that. So it's gonna be a huge loss to Disney, and <clears throat> that's all I'm gonna say. I mean, I think we've we covered that topic. Uh, Relatively quickly and relatively fast. Uh, well, I do want to say one more thing though, um, and this is just me. Um, I mean, if it goes on sale and I'm able to snag one for a decent price, that's cool. If not, that's fine. But honestly, like I saw uh, reviews of that new SH Big Arts Buzz Lightyear, but just you know, after talking about this movie, and even before when, you know, when uh, John and I were talking about, uh, you know, the Chris Evans stuff and, you know, the the forced kiss and that kind of thing, it made, it made me think, well, if the movie sucked, maybe I shouldn't buy this figure, but I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I mean, if you, if, if, if you, I mean, if you want to go get the alpha suit, I mean, I, I like the way it looks too. But at the same time, I mean, if I get it, it'd be like, like, it'd be like one of those like, um, what's it? Just one of those splurge spendings. Yeah. Those moments. That's what it would feel like to me. Like if I if I'm not like uh, working on my uh, Joes or my Marvel stuff or Transformers, it'd be like ah, I'm gonna splurge. Fuck it. That that would be, yeah I would buy it but that's just me though yeah no 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 I'm I'm completely with you because like because like don't get me wrong the extra stuff was cool like I liked the little uh, the little baton thing and uh, I did like you know Buzz having like a like an actual pistol like that was pretty interesting but what I don't get is why the hell does he have this huge ass laser gauntlet that he has to put on his arm instead of it actually being integrated into the alpha suit there's a theory to that that but the it, alpha already, suit. it already is the, uh, now that the that version of the alpha suit did not have the specifications that was added into this movie so it was like more of an origin story um, the flight pack and the laser 
Okay, okay. so I'm so I'm sure <laughs> this is a this is such a huge if that it doesn't seem possible, but if there's even the slightest possibility that we're getting a second movie, um, which let's face it, there's not going to be. <laughs> there's really not going Fuck to be. Fuck no. Fuck but in no. the in the teeny tiny slightest uh, possibility that's even tinier than Ant Man himself, <laughs> that there's a second movie where they do integrate the jetpack and laser uh, into the actual suit. Then maybe if the movie's good and the figure is good, I I grab one. But until then, nope. Don't want it. Don't need it. They'd be better off making a third Incredibles movie as opposed to a sequel to this piece of shit. <laughs> Seriously, like if they're gonna make another one, it's like no, you're better off just making a third Incredibles movie. Because those two movies were way better than this piece of shit. Or or how about um or how about a, a second Wally movie? No, that's one of those movies where it doesn't really need a sequel. They just don't. Yeah, but I don't know. Something tells me that you know it, it'd be interesting to see a, a Wally sequel. But I mean, I, mean, I, I do agree. It, it, but anyway, we're getting off topic now. We could talk about that another time. Yeah, I want to get this going here because in about an hour, my uh, new episode of Westworld comes up. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to be keep you guys too long, but um. Yeah, what's the shit going on with Ezra Miller? Because I've already watched two other videos about the shit he's got going on, and I can tell you right off the bat, it for him it's definitely some kind of mental health problem. But it, I think it's more behavioral issues that he's having i also i think i think i think you're right because i mean i i don't understand this guy's malfunction I mean, he's an a- he's an actor right he's one of the most popular dc characters that's supposed to be having this movie but now he's like completely sidetracked completely lost has no fucking rational thought or ideas of what the fuck he's doing and honestly i think Honestly, what they should do, they should pull the Flash movie. Well, they're not going to do that because they've already spent a lot of m- money bro, making bro. this movie right. because they also have Michael Keaton in it coming back as Batman, 89 Batman. And because of all that, they have no choice but to release it when they can right. so they can earn money and get their money back and pay themselves and pay for everyone that worked on the film. Plus... Does it look bad for them? Well, yeah, it does. But that's not their fault. It's Ezra's fault because Good he's point. clearly but, having a mental health crisis and he's not fully aware of it because most of the time when someone is mentally ill and they're having behavioral problems or issues or certain kinds of behaviors associated with whatever mental illness they have, most of the time, they're not aware that they are mentally ill because they're just going to assume that they're normal like everyone else and that it's not that big of a deal. But see, the problem is, from what I've read and heard about in his case, is that so far he hasn't been caught. He, he hasn't been caught red-handed doing anything illegal. But if he does, he'll get arrested and it'll go from there. Or if something comes up, and there's an arrest warrant for him, well, then eventually he's going to get arrested because there's a lot of concerning stuff surrounding him. And um, I can understand Warner Brothers' position. It's one of those things where they would say, our hands are tied, we need to release this movie so we can make our money back and pay everything off and... After that, they could just say, "Well, we're going to go with someone else and not with Ezra Miller," which would which would make sense. It's just one of those things for them. It's a weird, bad time slash position, and they just got to ride it out until after the movie comes out, and then they can say, "Okay, let's start the flash over with someone else, someone that's not someone that's a lot more mentally competent." 
So yeah, and uh, it's just their hands are tied, and they're and they're they want to make it easy as possible on themselves and everyone else. Right. Yeah, and um, I do want to say real quick, um, Grant Gustin. I heard that uh, that uh, they're gonna recast Ezra Miller with him, and I hope they do because if they were to do that, it would be perfect because. Because, you know, yeah, the CW's uh, Flash series, you know, it's been hit or miss uh, lately. And then, I mean, at first it was great. Then it was hit or miss. And then it's going back to its roots, finally. But for the most part, I mean, it was a, it's a great series. Uh, or at least it's a, you know, a decent series, to say the least. And, um, but Grant Gustin, he's a perfect Barry Allen. And I really hope that, that they cast him and they fire Ezra Miller. Mm -hmm. Um, cause, uh, cause, uh, I went to Hibachi's after seeing Thor love and thunder with, um, with my girl and her family and her brother, Ethan actually told me that there's a rumor going around saying that, uh, Grant Gustin is going to replace Ezra Miller, whether that's true or not. I don't know. Um, I don't know where he, he heard it from. Maybe it's, uh, but maybe comicbook.com or something. Um, but I hope that does come true because, I mean, kind of like with Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and um, Ryan Reynolds uh, as uh, Deadpool, they were uh, they were born to play those roles, and I feel the same for Grant Gustin. Um, and I really hope that um, not only do they fire Ezra Mil uh, Ezra Miller, but um but they replace him as well um yeah and and uh you know whether he's in the flash movie regardless or not i mean it if he is it is what it is if he's not then cool but you know we'll just have to see uh also i heard with black adam um uh at least this is what i've been told again by uh ethan and even my girl uh, bianca um uh, they did uh, say that uh, they heard that uh, with Black Adam that uh, they're restarting the DCEU. Like, like, they brought someone new in. They're like, scratch all the bullshit. We're restarting. And I don't know if, I don't know if um, the Suicide Squad was, you know, that restart or what. I don't know. Um, it, it's very unclear for the DCEU what the fuck is going on um and i mean if there's if hopefully that clarity will come and if it doesn't well we're gonna have to wait and see yeah i'll take another 10 yeah, 10 years to even even to re it would probably take take another two years to restart their universe and take another 10 for them to even lead up to something like justice league yeah, yeah. i agree with that and i've already i've already explained how they could have done it in previous podcasts, I've already explained how they could have done that properly from the get go, and I'm not going to get into that whole great big long explanation again. But right. no, they're just going to have to say fuck it, release the movie, and we'll start over in terms of something with Flash with a different actor to play the character, and we'll just not deal with Ezra Miller again after this because. Right. We're not going to be associated with whatever shit he's got going on. Exactly. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, and I hope that this means that Zack Snyder's Justice League, because I, I know, I know his, uh, I know Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, was, um, you know, released and everything, and it was, it was long as hell, but it was such a good movie, and I really hope that um, this. You know, with that and everything else that, uh, like, maybe in some chaotic way, it'll officially become canon. Because I feel like, you know, with, with everything that went on, it's not canon. It's just a standalone movie. Um, but, you know, I mean, if it does, that, that'll be cool and interesting how they play it off. But if not, I mean, I don't really care. I mean... Because, yeah, it leaves off with saying, hey, 
there may be a part two, but I mean, it, it was still a really good movie. But at any rate, yeah. Anyways, anyways, uh, let's get down to some toy news. Bum, bum, bum. Haslabs has made a 112 scale his tank for their classified lines. Looks mm. pretty cool, and they have mm. uh, newest tiers is a retro uh, Cobra Commander, and and it's par- apparently it's supposed to be on the card back, like uh, Chris with the original toy. They had those little card backs and the little the little plastic inserts. They're gonna really go retro with that uh, 112 scale uh, Cobra Commander. Um, looks pretty cool, and it's it's gonna be about 19 inches. About it's gonna be 19 inches long i think and uh are you guys gonna back it because my arm has been slowly slowly twisting i don't know if chris is gonna back it i don't know if tyler <laughs> would... no i do i do no. low-key want to <laughs> i low-key want to back it um the only thing is that even if i did back it and i did get one where the fuck am i gonna put it you know Guys, where the, the fuck, fuck am i gonna put it <laughs> Where the fuck am I going to put that monstrosity? I, I would love to have one because I've already come up. I, you know, me and my crossover shenanigans, I've already come up with fucking ideas for that thing. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass on it because A, no space for it. B, um, I don't need my wallet to continue to uh, beg for me not to spend money on shit. Um, and Third, I'm living under my mom's roof now, and so I really need to start saving for life. Uh, because if I don't do that, I'm always going to be broke, and uh, I don't need that. Um, so yeah, um, maybe 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 it, it, if it pops up in the future, I'll grab one. But as of now, unfortunately, I cannot do that. But my girl told me that uh, her dad. Uh, okay, so. And this is, uh, th- don't worry, this is relevant, I promise. But one time uh, my girl told me that um, uh, she uh, wanted this one NECA figure, but she missed out on it. And you know what her dad told her? What? You, uh, you may have missed out on something that you really wanted, but the next thing that comes along will be even better. Good point there. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, I, I just hope that uh, Retro Cobra Commander comes, like they do a mass retail release after the uh, Haslabs uh, this tank. Oh, don't don't worry. Uh, if you re- if you've seen, uh, um, and I guess this is low key a shout out uh, to the Foosh, um, but Robo did say um, that it's a high possibility that Hasbro will do a separate release of the Retro Cobra Commander, because cause they'd be fools not to. I mean, don't worry, I like the one I have, but something about that classic look that just, I mean, he looks like, just, just I, I like the blue, I like the helmet, I like the, the design of the uniform. I'm like, dude, that's what Cobra Commander should have been in the first place. I mean, the one I have, I like it, but that one just screams... This just eighties, just screams eighties, and I would love to have one of those. And not only that, but this is my thing. Th- this is kind of what I what I just thought of. So like, the cover commander we have now, that's like his um, his uh, sit back and uh, watch everything unfold I uniform, see. and then hold, and then um, and then the retro carded one that they showed for the his tank is the. Okay, time to get down and dirty uniform. Like, I, I, I get exactly what you're saying. Um, so. It feels like that the covert commander now is more of his dress military uniform, while mm-hmm. the other one is his battle fatigues. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It just blew my mind with that. <laughs> oh, it better fucking come out. If it doesn't, I'm going to... Chris, what do you think about, what do you think about this, this his tank? Well, I think it's cool, but uh, interesting fact, if they removed all the electronics from it, it would actually be about $100 less. Um, and there's already third-party 
classified scale accessories and vehicles that you can get at a cheaper price. So I think people would be better off getting that third party stuff, third party vehicles instead of this. Because what I don't get is like, okay, they're doing a Hess tank, but how come they're not doing like vamp? The how come they're not doing the vamp or the awe striker? You know, I don't because it's like if you're gonna have a Cobra vehicle, you should have a GI Joe vehicle to kind of counterbalance each other. I mean, that's true, but here's the thing, you know, HasLab is, you know, HasLab's for, like, the more expensive stuff that, you know, that may not make it to mass retail. So what they do is they'll, uh, is they'll, they'll put it out to see if people want it, and then for those who want it, they'll get it. Um, so I'm sure they will come back around and do a G.I. Joe vehicle. Because, I mean, I do agree. You can't have a vehicle for the bad guys and then not have a vehicle for the good guys and that kind of thing. So I do agree with that. Um, but it's like I said, you know, this is their first – this is Hazlab's first G.I. Joe uh, classified series vehicle. And so I think they're going to uh, – it's like I said, I think they're going to start off with a his tank. And then after that gets out of the way, so to speak, they'll come back and say, hey – we're going to do a, a G.I. Joe vehicle for the Joes, and we'll be like, yo, Joe, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, then, and, um, and then watch him do a yeah. reissue of the uh, USS Flag. Uh, they ain't going to go that route. be way too... Uh, I, mean, that, I mean, theoretically, they could, but I think something like that, they would just say, nah, it's too big. You know, That's what she said. Price, well, yeah. Because... For the for their retro line, they did the awe striker and his tank right. for retail. That's like, you know, they could have done something like that, but they brought the awe striker and the his tank back for the Transformers collaborative GI Joe box sets, which one of them I pre-ordered, as I mentioned earlier in this podcast. Mm-hmm. I pre-ordered the awe striker, but I lucked out on the his tank Megatron one. Simply because I wanted a brand new his tank, but also because I wanted a brand new O ring retro Baroness figure. Right. But it's fine. Yeah. I mean, they did they did make a uh, retro carded classified series Baroness. Um, I've seen I saw Robo's review on it on on the Fush YouTube channel, and I mean, it was uh, I mean it's it's a good figure. I mean, you lose some of the black. Um, like some of the black uh, paint apps on the uh, gray parts of the jumpsuit, um, it's not there to trying to because they're trying to do like a, a simplistic look for the sculpt that they already have, and they did take away the the gold for the glasses for the little ends on their glasses, and and instead of the uh, pistols being gold, they're black, and I think they threw in a couple uh, rifles as well and that kind of thing. So I mean, they do have a retro carded. Um, um baroness but um i mean i don't i mean i don't know what else to tell you other than that i mean it looks good i mean i won't be picking up because i'm perfectly happy with the baroness i have so well the retro G- the retro throwback gi joe figures along with the classified figures like those are selling more than the retro o-ring figures because people are enjoying having a lot more detail and articulation, which is fine. I'm just, um, I just really like the O-ring figures because those are the the first ones that came out, and I already have a bunch of them in my collection. But they're they're pretty cool too. You no, know, they really are. You know. But like, I'll you know I'll keep getting the O-ring stuff, but um, I am starting to enjoy the classified figures because those are those yeah. are pretty good too. See. See, we knew uh, we told you you'd be hooked. We, not well, I'm, I'm not gonna get. Well, I'm not gonna get every single one of them. I'm only gonna get. Well, well just because you don't get every single one. Of, just because you don't get every single one of them doesn't mean you ain't hooked. Right. That'd be like me saying I'm hooked into Black Series, but I'm still uh, not getting uh, every every freaking character. Like, like you're really like don't get me wrong. It would be cool, but do you really think I'm gonna get that many figure and dance just to make the Bith Cantina band? 
No, nah, probably not. Because A, space, B, budget. Yeah, because I'm with the classified line, I'm only going to get a hand, just a couple of like Cobra and G.I. Joe figures of the characters that I really like, and that's about it. Because with the O ring scale figures that I have, I pretty much have almost every single character, both G.I. Joe and Cobra, along with the vehicles in my collection. So it's like I'm already pretty well stocked with G.I. Joe. But then after I get the, the pre orders, on Hasbro, after I get those and a couple more G.I. Joe classified figures after that, I should be good for, you know, for now in terms of G.I. Joe with right. stuff in my collection. Because right. I think with G.I. Joe, I'm going to, you know, I'm probably going to get to a certain point where it's like, well, there's nothing really else to get in terms of G.I. Joe. So it's like, okay, what what else do I need with... Masterpiece Transformers or Star Wars figures, you know. Because that's the other thing. It's the same thing with the Star Wars retro collection. They're not doing all the characters in that style again. They're only doing a certain amount because they know that the Star Wars Black Series and retro uh, toy line, they know those are selling a lot more than the retro collection toy line. Right. Because they know all of those, the ones with the more detail and articulation, they know those ones are selling like hotcakes as opposed to like the retro throwback, old school looking action figures. They know people will still buy them, but they're not, but people aren't buying those as much as the other ones. Yeah, because like, I mean, if the vintage collection figures weren't so ungodly expensive, because I'm sorry, $15 for a figure that small, you're crazy. But, um, um, I mean, that's just me, and I have nothing against vintage collection uh, collectors unless they're stuck up assholes. But, um, uh, well, I mean, that'd be for anyone, but my point is, um, I'd still be collecting vintage collection figures if A, I'd find them more often and I'll have to go to uh, third party uh, sellers or stores like Holocron. And again, nothing against Holocron Toy Store or eBay or whatever. It's just I sh- I feel like I shouldn't have to go there to get what I want uh, when I want to toy hunt. And the thing is that, and like I said, thirteen to fifteen bucks a, a uh, vintage collection figure that's just too much for me. But I mean, I do know that they sell very well because if they didn't, then obviously Hasbro would you know, cancel the line again and um, everything like that. So, but yeah, Vintage Collection Black Series, they're selling like hotcakes. Um, but um, at any rate. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we, we all collect differently. I mean, Chris, Chris, he's more of that chug type of guy and has those vintage figures. And there's me with the uh, masterpiece and uh, imports and the other 112 scale stuff. But um, we we all have different collections, and I mean that's and we know how the game goes. I mean, they're we know how the game is played. Mm-hmm. But uh, speaking of toy related news, um, <laughs> I don't think we covered this uh, the last podcast, but um, I also never knew it would happen. But they those crazy bastards did it. Now in the masterpiece line, MP57 Skyfire has been revealed. Is this another upgrade, or are fans keeping the Phoenix? And of well, course, you, you could keep the Phoenix yeah. version because what you could do is you could put Phoenix in uh, vehicle mode and then put Skyfire in robot Empire. mode and dis- or however he's called. You could put him in robot mode for displaying purposes. True. That way you got one in robot mode and one in vehicle mode for displaying purposes. Right. You know, because some people will do that. They'll get one for robot mode and one to display in vehicle mode. Because I think they both look good. You know, I think either way, they both look good. And you can get that one or the Takara one. Either way, it's, you oh, know, it's whatever it's whatever character you want. And either way, it's going to look good. Yeah, I think it was... Sorry, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm just going to stick with the Phoenix. I, I, I absolutely love that figure. Um, I think it's cool. I know it, he doesn't have a lot of articulation as the new uh, masterpiece does, but I mean, overall, I mean, I mean, I, I never, I mean, I've never really had any breakage with it either. On top of that, and usually, you know, sometimes with the masterpiece line, sometimes breakage could um, appear, per se. Uh, I, I, I've had that happen with MP24 uh, Star Saber, and and on top of that, when they had MP44 ca- came out, they had the the knee problem and paint problem and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, I hope that uh, Takara Tony. Uh, Tommy actually puts a lot of effort in making sure those uh, figures are uh, very solid. And I mean, once reviews start popping up, it's a, it's a. I'm not saying it's a maybe, but uh, I mean, it's, it's, it could be a figure that could pique my interest in the future. But I guess only time will truly tell and find and and unfold. But um, but yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. Tyler. Um, I mean, you guys know I don't collect Transformers Masterpiece because of uh, budget reasons, space reasons, and the fact that I'm extremely far behind. But, I mean, looking at the third-party ones and then now the official Takara one, I mean, they look good. My prediction is, I mean, if, if people... I know a lot of people... Uh, I, I know there's a bunch of people that... I do uh, do the thing that Chris said, and that's get two of whichever one, third party and or official, and keep one in bot mode, keep one in alt mode. But it will be interesting to see how many people will swap the um, the third party offerings for the official Jetfire. Um, but um, I mean. Because also, too, no, not everyone can afford to have uh, two versions of whichever figure um, or the space or whatever. So the, they'd have to, like, make a decision. And to those who who have to make decisions and that kind of thing, good luck to you. Um, but, um, yeah, th- that's just my kind of random quick thoughts about that. Um, I don't think there's much more for me to say. Um, but as like a the outside uh, as a person uh, on the outside looking in, it'll be interesting to see uh, who swaps for the for the official, who keep who uh, skips it and opts for their third party um, figure. So we'll just have to see. Well, anyways, moving right along. Um, well, as if the wallet weeps more. Uh, allegedly, Storm Shadow, Spirit, and the Cobra Officer has been making rounds in the U.S. and has been popping up on Walmarts. Uh, I've been on a few hunts, and I found nothing but Flint's, Jays, Commanders, and more Snake Eyes movie figures. Um, and also, there's been retro figures that have been popping up, too, but uh, I, unfortunately, did bite the bullet, and I bought all three. They should be here sometime next week. I guess I will. Nice. Yeah, that, that spare looks pretty good. It, it, it just, it just kind of bothers me because, you know, there, you know, toy hunting is still enjoyable sometimes, but sometimes it just, it just sucks when you go somewhere and you can't find what you're looking for. It's just, yeah, um, I gotta agree with you on that. I mean, I do have uh, this one game stop, and I'm not saying which one because I don't want anyone who lives in the area to, you know, to start, uh, you know, going to my favorite spot. Um, that may be selfish, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, everyone for themselves when it comes to collecting, but um, at least sometimes. But anyway, um, sometimes I'll go to this one GameStop, and n- at least so far, nine times out of ten, they have what I'm looking for. But the- excuse me, but there are also those other times where they don't. Which you know, it is what it is. But um, I mean, as far as I don't know who, uh, I don't know what lucky, uh, what lucky ass people have been finding them at their Walmarts because I can't find shit. Um, I mean, granted, I've been looking at only my local Walmart. I haven't ventured out to any others, but you know, just from experience, I when I'm trying to look for either a new wave of Black Series or Marvel Legends or whatever, 
I cannot find shit. And does it piss me off? Damn right it does. But do I get over it? I mean, depending on what it is, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, it's just more satisfying to find it in the store as opposed to, um, as opposed to ordering it online all the time. So, because I I do want to get that uh, that uh, classic inspired storm shadow as well. Um, Spirit, I, I mean, granted, I don't know shit about any of the GI Joe characters, but you know, I mean, for Spirit, um, unless he's like an important member of GI Joe, I really don't care. Um, I mean, the figure's cool. I've seen re- I've seen a review of the figure from uh from the Foosh, but I mean, honestly, I'm more uh, anxious to get the Storm Shadow and um, um, and uh, that kind of thing. So, to try to figure out a reason why to be doing this or what? Who knows? We're having a mid-show crisis. Yeah, it's a mid-show crisis. What just happened? Hmm. Oh, sorry. No, I was. Uh, trying to find a picture of my phone. My phone was acting up a little bit. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. You're good, buddy. You're good. Well, uh, moving on. Uh, TFCon 2022 is back in Canada. Um, there uh, on the uh, TFW 2005, I did put a uh, third party review. They uh, team over at Moon Studios that did the uh, Raidatron and the uh, TV Cell. They are doing a Planet Cybertron. They are legitly doing What? It. They are doing Primus. Hold on. Oh wow. Yeah, they're literally they're literally doing a Primus. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I shit you not. And I mean this is what Oh, that looks pretty cool though. That looks so cool. Imagine I, people imagine people put that with either their Haslab or their um or their uh, third-party Unicron. I forget what it was, but... Um, well, Hanson, yeah. you got one of those? I got Cell. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. I, I, I'm probably going to end up getting that, because I think I I, I would I, I like Cell. I like the posability. Um, I mean, it's... I mean, what Unicron and Primus, they're like one... They are practically brothers, and I, I think it would be... I think it would be... I think you'd be an idiot to pass up pass up that figure because oh, Cell fuck. is so fucking cool. There's going to be a Masterpiece Pipes. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. fuck yeah. I'm going to have to get him. Cell? No. Who the hell is fan, Pipes? Fans Toys 57 Tube, a.k.a. Masterpiece Pipes. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Fans Toys are doing a Pipes. Um... Oh, he comes with a transformation cog, just like in uh, season three. Oh, that's fucking what the hell cool. Is, what the hell is pipes? Oh, he was a transformer in season three of the G one series. Yeah, I don't oh. think I've gotten that far. Oh, that's fucking dope. I'm gonna have to get him. But there's also this fans toys masterpiece cliff jumper too. That looks pretty good. I'm I gonna really, get. I really like the fans toys power glide. He looks so freaking cool. Yeah, dude. He looks so good. And and then and then I, I have a blaster. But I don't know about the fans toys yet. I mean, I don't the chest is way too gold. It's just way too gold for me. I mean that's a power glide? Glide? Wait on power glide? Oh blaster. Yeah, his chest yeah. is I kind of like that gold. It's different, but it's supposed to be yellow. It is supposed to be. Yeah, it is supposed to be yellow. Yeah, that's a little too chromed out. Um, but then again, what, what the hell am I talking about? I don't collect that shit. <laughs> right, and um, yeah, but they got a lot of, like, the third-party panel is just instead they had up there is insane. There's even, they're even doing, Zeta is doing a battleship combiner. I saw that. That looked kind of cool. I mean, I, I was I was like thinking to myself, is that a broadside? That's exactly what I thought. And then I'm like, wait a second, it's a combiner? Was, what the fuck are they doing over there? I, I was actually 
I mean, if anything, I would love to have a Predaking or uh, or something else. But but yeah, a lot of a lot of good uh, figures in that. I'm not gonna lie, that Cliff Jumper looks really good. Um, my fans' toys. It pisses me off that that they are releasing the uh, King of oh, uh, Victory Leo from tra- uh, Transformers Victory. And oh my god, that lion mode looks really good. And then they got the, uh, the the Star Saber, but the problem is, I have a Star Saber, and I'm wait- and I'm waiting for um, the the same brand of hit of that came with that Star Saber for the for Victory Leo. But when the hell will that show up? Who fucking knows? Anyways, moving right along, um. Tyler, you did you say you had a custom spotlight? Um, yeah, actually, I mean, it's I'm model train to stuff. Put but... On the spot, but I don't know if you if you have a custom spotlight or anything. I know, Chris, did you did you find that photo off Twitter? No, I can't. I can't find it. I didn't find it in time. All right, uh, Tyler, did you have a a spotlight at all, or not really? Um, I you mean, did, yeah, I mean, it's it's you model spot, but if you don't have anything, that's fine, man. I mean. I got model train stuff and show. I mean, you can you can show it off if you want to. It's your call. But like, yeah, try um, to take this time on it. Right. All right. So briefly, I'm gonna show you some a brake van and some freight cars that I 3D printed, and some touch ups and other uh, minor things that I did for my engines. I have like a find where to flip. Screen. Uh, oh, wait. Oh. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Okay, so. Uh, so these freight cars right here, and then the two, uh, between Edward and the brake van, I three D printed. So. Um, so yeah, I 3 printed those, but the, uh, three links are, uh, from Smith's from, that I got from, uh, Gage Master in the UK. Uh, they're a UK, uh, model train shop. And then the wheels I got from eBay. Um, but everything else is, uh, 3D printed on them, uh, with, you know, just random couplings and buffers for junk in one of them. And then my Nana gave me like some, uh uh blue pebbles from i guess hobby lobby that she didn't need anymore and then on edward thomas and henry i weathered them thomas i restored his lining and a line or two on uh henry and uh, they have 3d printed lamps uh thomas is hollowed out and blacked out uh, for an led they have new, uh, new bigger buffers that were 3D printed, screwing couplings, and then I uh, 3D or I uh, gave Annie and Claire about 3D printed buffers uh, that are bigger, and they have three links, and their roofs were repainted because they were kind of chipping off, and I didn't replace Thomas's tail lamp, but Edward and Henry's uh, tail lamps are glued to their tenders. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as they go. Um, uh, I would like to get some uh, custom faces 3D printed and that kind of thing, but that's going to have that's going to have to wait a little while. Um, And if I can get them some better looking 3D printed whistles, uh, mostly for Thomas, though, um, that'd be cool, too. But we'll see what happens. But other than the. But other than the faces um, and uh, some DCC and LEDs and that kind of thing, they're pretty much done. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I'm still working on James because, um, uh, long story short, I thought I grabbed the uh, the gloss clear, but no, I grabbed the white. So he's uh, got a little bit of... Uh, snow or dust on him uh depending on if i choose to use him as a a christmas james or a quarry james so he may have a dual use there but my dad was cool enough to give me to get me some spare parts from the bachman website to make a regular james so i still need to work on those but 
I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I just plan on uh, 3D printing some other rolling stock, like coaches and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, there will be some other figure projects in the near future. So, nice. um, and just one quick thing. I promise this is going to be quick. Uh, my store manager um, asked me to make a custom uh, Dragon Ball Z inspired droid. So I'm going to, and I know Chris is, uh, I know Chris is like, I want to see him do something different, but I mean, the only thing I can do is Astromix. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an R2 unit uh, painted up like Goku. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, because my, uh, my manager's fiance is huge into both Star Wars and Dragon Ball. So, yeah. I mean, Goku, we'll see how that goes. Goku has a pretty easy color palette, too, red and uh, orange and blue. Orange, Maybe. blue... Um, I have, um, probably going to do black for the head panels. Um, but I don't know. Cause he, cause all those super saiyan God, whatever power ups, there's so many, I mean, Jesus. Yeah. Sometimes he's blonde. Cause sometimes he's blonde. Sometimes he, he has air of blue. Sometimes it's red. So on and so forth. So, and I guess we'll uh, go into John's custom spotlight of the week because he just kind of showed it on camera. What you got uh, there, John? Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I've been working on a uh, a dead zombie strain for Multiverse of Madness. Um, uh, I think the only thing I got to do uh, for now, right now is just darken the red here. But as you can tell, the the torso itself, I mean, everything looks pretty good. I think when I tore apart the figure, I kind of broke something. But I'll just bisect him and you know this is what i got for uh for the torso it's actually been a fun custom i i I've never done anything like a zombie before so this is definitely something new that i'm definitely trying for a for for a zombie-esque figure but overall and then uh i've also been uh modifying uh jane foster thor um i uh, gotta get a, i gotta figure out a cape uh i added different uh I added different discs. Hold on, just pop off the head. There we go. I added uh, different discs right there and uh, started painting up the helmet because uh, these uh, the wings here you can literally see your finger through them. So you, so what I did I oh, just really I repainted that silver just to give it that more of that solid finish and not that uh, Hasbro swirly plastic which is also notorious even for the boots. So I'm going to update all of that. But um. Yeah, and as for that, just minor little touch-ups for figures here and there, uh, like I did with uh, with Supreme Strange here. I actually was doing a little bit of touch-ups here around the waist and uh, add a little bit of blue to the torso and chest. Great figure. I, I really like it. I'm not a big fan of the cape, but as a standalone, it's it's nice to see a much more of a different, different Strange. I mean, if I were to do anything more with it, I would like to figure out a way how to uh, maybe darken around the edges here, look with some, uh, make it look like, like just dirt or something, just got grimed up on the on his outfit or something. I don't know. Basically, basically add, basically add some shading. Yeah, add some shading to it. But um, overall, that's that's pretty much it for uh for custom stuff. Um, I do have a question though about that Jane Foster Thor. A, how the absolute hell did you uh, get one? B, why the hell didn't you tell me? Hey, I found a a uh, mighty Thor. Do you want one? And C, um, what other mods do you plan on doing? That didn't you say you were planning on doing like a monster like the uh, the kind of um, the waist pieces that that hang down uh, and exchange that for like fabric or wire fabric or something like that? For well, for for, for these, I'm probably going to leave them as the same, but I'm going to go back to the. Mm through the movie uh, when i see the movie or find any uh, photo a good or high res photos of this to touch up and and whatnot um i thought she had a uh like the i thought she had a waist here um mm-hmm. like right here and uh to answer your first question uh i was having i've been having charging problems with my phone so the the charging port the charger port in there fucking doesn't work so yeah. i had to pick up some uh, wire, wireless chargers so i can charge my phone I went to Walmart looking for G.I. Joe stuff, see if I can find Cobra Command, uh, Storm Shadow, Spirit, or uh, Cobra, uh, Cobra Officer. 
Lo and behold, they had one Jane Foster Thor, they had one Teenage Groot, and they had one... There was another one I bought. Was it, was it Ravager Thor? No, I, no, I bought Ravager, Ravager Thor later later that day. So yeah, they had one Jane Foster Thor and one um, Groot. That's all they had. And they had... Well, they had... Uh, they had a gore, and that I, I, I want to see the movie first before I pick up gore. So, bro, if I would have known you would have found a gore, I would have asked you to get one for me. Damn it! I mean, if I find you one, I'll get you one. All right, cool, cool. And like I said, you know, if if you need me, if you, you want, I got you, fam. I got you. What? I say I got you, fam. Be all right. All right. Um. Um, other than, uh, but yeah, uh, and just real quick, I thought about this, uh, as I was, uh, watching it more towards the end of the movie when I was watching it, uh, with everyone, um, you know, being my girl and her family. Um, I think I'm going to do the crate and John, you kind of inspired me with your, uh, with your, uh, mishmash Marvel Legends and Mafex customs. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to. I'm going to take a KO Infinity War Thor. I think you know where I'm going with this. Yep. I'm going to take an, I'm going to yeah, eventually. <laughs> I'm going to eventually, not not probably not anytime soon, but eventually, unless Metacom Toy announces one, I'm going to get a KO Infinity War Thor, and instead of using the heads from that. Unless I learn to sculpt hair better, which I highly doubt. Either I'm either gonna A sculpt the hair on those existing head sculpts, or B, which is honestly the more uh, likely thing, I am going to get a Ravenger Thor just for the head, and then off the rest is custom fodder. So yeah, I'm gonna do the the most bad shit thing I could ever do. But, like I said, it's going to be a KO in Infinity War Thor. I'm not getting a real Mayfax in Infinity War Thor. That, I'm not that crazy. Not as crazy as I am. No, you, sir, are a madman. I don't know how... I don't know how... <laughs> you're, you're, I, I don't know... I, I just don't know. I don't know how you can do it. Because I can't take that big of a risk. I can't because I'm not financially able to, <laughs> and that's not yes. fair. I, I, I that guess, is so guess, not fair. It's just, I guess, it just, just comes with the, the luck I have. I have obtained <clears throat> in these past couple of years. Not, not to brag, but I've been very lucky. I, I, I mean, I mean, hopefully by this time next year I will be, in a house, living with Haley. I hope so. Knock on wood. Finger, fingers crossed for you both. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. But um, moving on, let us go to our favorite corner. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh wait, is it KO? Is it KO corner or is it yeah. asshole the month? I forget. KO oh, corner. KO corner. I forgot to add asshole the month to the notes, but we can do asshole of the month if anyone wants to do it. But um, yes. For some of the KOs, I was able. I, I actually picked up some. I actually saw some pretty good ones. Um, there is a uh, right now on Shoji store. There is MP39 uh, masterpiece um, Sunstreaker for only fifty four ninety nine, and honestly, it looks really good. It's it looks like a straight, just a straight up uh, KO of the original. And I know Chris has been looking for, uh, been looking for him, right, Chris? Yeah, but I don't know about this one. I mean, the plastic, especially in the Bielka mode, it looks kind of soft. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. It just looks like it's really soft to me. I mean, I'd be better off with just getting a actual Takara masterpiece Sunstreaker if I really wanted to, if I could find one at a good price. But there's just something about this one's plastic that just looks really soft and it Mm -hmm. might just be the lighting of the camera 
you know, and the backdrop and all that. It might just be that, but it it just looks, I don't know. I mean, it looks okay. It just looks like the plastic is really soft. Right, right. I mean, it looks good. I mean, I mean, I have the original, so I'm not going to go down my way and buy a KO Sunstreaker. But I, I've had this idea of taking a, a, a KO uh, Bumblebee and Sunstreaker, merging them together to make it much more of a bigger Bumblebee, much more like like there was an IDW. There was an ID. I remember reading some of the older IDW where Bumblebee got heavily damaged. And so what they had to do was rebuild him entirely, and then he he got a muscle car form, but he also he also looked like he had his uh, generation one head a little bit more. So I was thinking of taking a KO Sunstreaker and a KO Bumblebee and just having the colors of Bumblebee, like with the the blacks and all the yellows and stuff like that, for a much more of a mature, larger Bumblebee. I I thought about it a couple times. Oh, that'd be kind of cool, like a Bumblebee Prime. What's up, bud? I got a question. Uh, was that comic? Because uh, I think that's uh, okay. So, didn't Hasbro do a Generations uh, figure Bumblebee where the door yeah. wings were like built onto the shoulder pads because the shoulder pads were the front of the car? Yep. Okay, I know what you're talking about because I have seen that one. Um, and um, yeah, that figure sucked though. I'm not gonna lie. You're not gonna lie. Um, but, um, I mean, the, the design was really cool. I, I did like the design. It's just, I, the door wings being on the, on the shoulder pads. Are you kidding? What, what kind of, who the, Hasbro, that's your own franchise. Why the hell are you being stupid? Well, you know, play stupid games, play stupid prizes, I guess. And it's Hasbro. They, they, they had, even when they started their Haslabs projects, it, Took a while to take off, especially for Unicron, so I don't know. This and other kind of, and kind of, sorry, I just gotta ask this question before I forget it. Um and this one uh so I do have this one I do have this question about Hazlab though. Do we know for sure if it's like the different teams submitting the project to Haslab, or is it like Haslab? is their own team and then they partner up with like the star wars team or the marvel uh, team or whatever i think it's a di- i think it's a different i think it's different teams i think it, it is different teams doing things differently basically you have like a star wars team a gi joe team a transformers team and they're all they're i mean they're all working at hasbro but they're all in separate teams working on separate toy lines Okay, so, I mean, I knew there were separate teams working on different toy oh. lines and stuff, but I just didn't know if, like, if HasLab was a part of those teams or if they were separate that the teams go to. No, I think the teams are all separately, but they're all working under HasLab at Hasbro in okay. Rhode Island, in Rhode Island, where Hasbro is located. Okay. Okay, so so essentially, and sorry, I'm just trying to make it click in my head. So essentially, the teams just uh, go to the has to the Hazlab part of Hasbro for whatever project they're working on. Yeah, and vice versa. Okay, that, yeah, because you have different like design that. teams working on different toy lines, and then they report back to the people that are in charge of Hasbro of HasLab slash Hasbro, and they get feedback off of one another to keep finalizing their products and, and doing and, what they need to do. And right. I'm sure they also have to consult not only, uh, say, Marvel Studios or Lucasfilm, but also Disney, since Marvel and Star Wars are you know owned by Disney. It's basically like General Motors has Chevy, GMC, Buick, Cadillac. They all have different sub divisions of car companies or or subdivisions of a car company with different design teams and engineers working and designing cars and they and then they report back to the people in charge of general motors okay that's that you know that's one that's another way of looking at it so 
Because you're going to so, have different designers and different engineers working on different projects from each other. Right. Okay, so would that mean that they don't report to Disney for the Star Wars and Marvel stuff, or they no, wouldn't? They would be working alongside with Disney and whoever okay. else is giving Hasbro permission to make toys and figures of characters that are owned by Disney or whomever. Okay, because, and I guess the only reason why I'm asking this is because, uh, because it still doesn't make sense to me how all the other Haslabs were funded, but yet the Rancor wasn't. I mean, it does in the sense that the tiers sucked, but I just didn't know if, like, Disney was, like, telling them, like, hey, we have to make these tiers suck and blah, 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 uh, or, uh, or we, we don't want to, you know, put too much money into this so let's say make the rocks and bones accessories which is stupid um you know make stupid decisions like that so that's all i was trying to wrap my head around oh you're good you're good but uh well what's this other ko here i mean this one doesn't look too bad but i'm not into beast wars or beast machines toys this is a uh, as other people are i mean it I mean, this. I mean, even though it's a KO, it doesn't look that bad. This is a KO of the uh, Perfect Effects Beast Go- uh, Gorilla. Gor- Gorgira? Gorilla? It's a op- oh, oh Gorgira. Gorgira. It's an uh, it's an optimal Optimus, and it, I mean, it looks really cool. Uh, Tyler, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, I can see it. I mean, it looks it looks really cool. I I don't I have a. Uh, Leonidas, which is a KO of the um, perfect effect. I mean, I might pick it up. I might not. I, I don't know yet. But mm. I, just, I, just, I just think it looked really cool. And uh, But... Uh, the bad. The bad. See, this is what oh, I'm really looking Lord. for. Sir Toys. We're back to the shitty Dollar General Dollar Tree plastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this RC this is a K this one is an RC movie purple version two. Now is this based off of the one Hasbro did back in 07 because yeah. originally RC was supposed to be in the first movie? Yes, it is. It's a it's a K it's a terrible sculpted KO of her. And my god, is it disgusting. I mean I mean, the motorcycle mode looks really cool. Yeah, it's, that's not bad. That's the, that's the only redeeming quality of it. Just that's the only redeeming quality. That that's it. That's 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 it. that's that's it. That's like overall. I mean, that blur looks like a masterpiece figure versus that freaking KRC. <laughs> oh my god, it is terrible. Uh, that looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, well, not as bad as I mean. Okay, this one I don't know about. I mean, it's a <laughs> it's a crossover figure using. <laughs> oh my god! I know I like crossovers, but if they're, but I'm not sure I'm gonna like this one. <laughs> well, the jet mode, jet mode doesn't look too bad, but. Doesn't need the Iron Man mode. No, it does not at all. It it is just oh my god. Technically that'd be technically that'd be Iron Patriot mode. The oh, that's right, really, Iron Patriot. Forgot about that one. The the Gemma looks really cool, but the bot mode is laughably terrible. Oh I bet it's god. I bet it's hollow. It's a oh, shell I, former, here, I bet. I guarantee you move one 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 joint, it would shatter into a million pieces. I oh, guarantee boy. it. Oh my god! But that was uh that was pretty much all the chaos. Um, well then, now we now we move on to our favorites favorites. Time. I actually have just found another ko. Oh, that right. I think you guys are gonna love. All right, let's see. Yeah, yeah, let's try that real quick. Let's you have it. to look at the face. Start with the face first, and then work your way from there. I'm going to send it in the chat right now. Okay. I get, ready to, get ready to laugh. <laughs> oh, 
I'm, I'm trying to pull it up. Someone stuck their finger up his ass, and he's just like. <laughs> Oh, Batman, what are they doing to you? <laughs> Batman, <laughs> Batman looks like he was, like, sexually assaulted by his own vehicle. <laughs> Revenge Hero Alliance. Robin, Robin, I must say, I have seen some shit. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like you just saw, it looked like he just got that, it looks like he was in combat and had that thousand-yard stare. Just like yeah. Just time, like. It just that is his face for uh, for just forever. That's his face in just like, oh my god. <laughs> and in vehicle mode, his face is just doing a straight up face plant on the, <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> that's probably for, well. Then again, that's probably all the animals the uh, tumbler hit, and that's his face from uh, <laughs> seeing every animal is killed, just watching the blood just go, <laughs> like he's literally licking it up from the ground. It just ran into every fucking pothole or something. Oh my god! Oh, he, has, he has to hold that bat symbol so he keeps remembering what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh and it looks like god. he's got fucking footballs for feet. Okay, can I show you? Uh, okay, it's not really a KO, it's not, but it's a, it's a football for feet. What's up, Tyler? Sorry, it's just, uh, I wanted to share something. It's not technically a KO, but it's like a concept of like a uh, of what a Funko Pop uh, line of this franchise would look like. And uh, it, trust me, I, I think you're gonna find it at least somewhat amusing. All right. All right. Let me send it in the chat real quick. And I mean, if I fail at being funny with it, it's whatever. But I think it's hilarious. So, um, bit of a shout out to Train Boy because he does a bunch of train stuff, and he's he did this video for Curse Thomas merch, and and the last video at the end he said, um, "We do not need any Funko Pop dolls of friends," and yeah, I see why. <laughs> I don't understand these Funko things. I don't like. I don't understand the eyes. Why are they just pitch black beady eyes? I don't I don't understand it. And every goddamn toy show Comic Con I've been to, these things are all over the fucking place. They are the fucking cancer of collecting and toy community. <laughs> They're fucking cancer. I shit I mean... you not the one year at Comic Con in Madison. There was the one booth, and all it was from top to bottom, side to side, were these goddamn Funko Pop things. They're so fucking stupid. I don't understand it. These things are fucking cancer. And no, you and your buddy are right. We don't need goddamn Thomas the Tank Engine Funko Pop shitty things. These look like fucking knockoffs to begin with. Did you get these from Sir Toys? Oh my god, we don't need more of this shit. The... The only I'd decent rather use looking these things for target practice at a shooting range, and it would give me great pleasure. So much to the point that I would come in my pants. Thank you. <laughs> the only the only decent one is Sir Topham Hats, but I mean, Percy looks like I mean, if they didn't give him beady black or pitch black eyes, if they gave him color, you know, like a human eye. That would be great. I don't understand them. It's they're just fucking cancer. They're just. They're it just looks like okay. Thomas looks like he's seen some shit and and uh, like he's gonna fucking like, eat your soul. Exactly. <laughs> they're goddamn soul eaters because they have there's nothing in their eyes. Therefore, they have no soul. And Emily looks like someone just squashed her and then just. Lazily photoshopped a twelve on her on her tender. Gordon looks like he's trying to be a cosplay mix between Edward and Henry. James looks like a squished soul eating monstrosity, and Percy looks like well, pretty much the same thing. But I'm oh my god, poor Percy. That guy, that guy has not only seen some shit, but he's um experienced um a lot of um. Uh, unspeakable trauma, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, the, yeah, 
thank 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 God there are no Thomas and Friends Funko Pops because uh, even the Cars ones uh, that you that were in like Target and that kind of thing, even they looked really weird. If Hallmark st- started selling these fucking things, I would lose Hallmark's respect so fucking quick. Oh my <laughs> god. Because it's like, wow, really? The quality of Hallmark? If they were to start selling these <laughs> things, it'd just be like down the drain so goddamn quick. Ugh. <laughs> it's, no, uh, they're like, um, it looks like something like the, uh, um, God. It looks like they're about to say, I saw all your soul. I saw all your soul. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That's fucking great. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Thank you. Now, I'm glad you enjoyed. That was good. I would, uh, whatever. That, that was, that was, I mean, Funko Pops, they are, they are cancer. I, I've seen the fucking right as law they are. <laughs> I said fucking would you, right as law they are. God damn. Would you be... Okay, let me ask you. Would you be disappointed if I owned a few? If, if that's your thing, go for it. Because I'm, I'm that not gonna... a Funko Pop guy. Believe me, I'm not a Funko Pop guy. Um, But I got K2SO when I wanted to go see Rogue One. R2 came later after that because, I mean, R2 is my guy, you know? Well, they're, and they're, then... They're, they're droids. They're not... They're not of that of flesh and blood that looks like something cursed. True, but I also got uh, the New 52 Harley Quinn Funko Pop because, I mean, that was my favorite design of Harley. And I also got the Clone Wars Season 1 and 2, and uh, not Anakin. So I, I don't even know if I want Anakin anymore. Um, but uh, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka. And I don't know if I'm going to get Anakin and complete the Trinity or if I'm just going to say screw it and and off uh, Ahsoka and Obi-Wan because, I mean, Funko Pops do nothing for me. Yeah. So. I mean, if people want to go out and buy them for whatever reason, that's fine. I'm not going to stand in your way for the pursuit of happiness because I believe in the pursuit right. of happiness. I, if they want to go out and buy them, go for it. I will not get in your yeah. way. But me personally, I just don't care for them. I don't like them. But if people like them, go for it. For all I care, is, right? You know. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, whatever. I did that's, also, that's just my um, two cents. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, and I did give. Uh, I did get uh, uh, my girl um, a few Funko Pops of like Boba Fett from the book of Boba Fett. Uh, this really, uh, this, uh, I don't know, I, I mean, I thought it was at least kind of cute, but this Mandalorian uh, Valentine's Day Ahsoka one, um, and then, um, and then uh, this uh, Bad Batch uh, five pack of the Bad Batch crew, um, well, minus Omega, but still, so, so she, um, but even, I think she even had at least one Funko Pop before even before I met her, but I could be wrong. I don't remember for sure. Um, but anyway, um, I mean they're cool, but like like I said, they don't do anything for me either. So, well, anyways, let us move on to our favorite time of the month, and that would yes. be asshole of the month. Who shall begin? I don't have an asshole of the month. Howard? Other than, yeah, I don't got none. Uh, other than who? Uh, did uh, did you have at least one, Chris? Uh, just briefly, Mother Nature doesn't need to be so fucking hot and humid out. Other than that, that's all I got. Amen. All right. Uh, well, I agree with Chris on that. Um, also, gravity, because look what... Uh, one of my shells did to my fucking Figma tracer, shear the joint clean off her neck, so now I gotta either A uh, get a KO just for the joint or B, try to find a joint on eBay, so thank you motherfucking shells um so gravity, mother nature um stuck up uh, collectors and people in general um I don't know what you have shoved so far up your ass, but get it out ASAP <laughs> and quit being so damn stuck up. 
calm the hell down. It's just coffee. Live life the best you can and respect others and you will be respected back. If you don't, all you're going to be treated is with shit, you know, and disrespect. And uh, there's no need to be disgraceful, disgusting, or despicable. Stop it. Get help if you need it. Um, <laughs> all the dumbass drivers out there, same goes for you. Quit driving like a freaking maniac, please. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, th- and yes, that does include using your turn signals, even if you're switching lanes. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's pretty much all of it. Um, I may be forgetting one, but if I am and I remember it, I'll write it down for next next month. Nice. So. Nice. Um, as for me, I guess the only asshole is just some people I know, like... I, I don't like just the, just this one person I know. I mean, I I I don't I I just you stay to your own business. I stay in my lane. You stay in yours. If you cross in over in my lane, I will say things to you that you will never expect me to say. And um, hmm. stop making stop making not only me feel unwelcome, but stop making my girlfriend feel unwelcome when you when your ugly uh, ass face is here. Um, on top of that. You have way too much baggage, and also stop telling, stop telling my sister how to raise her kids because you're not. I mean, you're you're being a complete hypocrite when it comes to your own child. So shut the fuck up. And uh, yeah, that's 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 my only asshole. I actually do have one more. I just remembered. Um, people who drive off before I finish their orders. Quit doing that already. If you're in that much of a hurry, you don't need to be ordering shit, all right? So if you're going to just drive off before I can finish uh, taking your order down, then don't even bother, okay? Um, and, um, and not only that, but, you know, it's disrespectful to me, and then you're just going to get upset with me if I don't have your order down correctly. So calm down. Take the slow lane like Lightning McQueen did. And let me just finish your order, please. So that it saves everyone hassle. Thank you. That is all. All right. Well, uh, for discussion topics, I I picked a couple. Um, I just, just kind of just came up, uh, came to me. Um, yeah. So they're they're really quick. They're really easy. But um, do you guys sometimes feel you were born in the wrong decade? Yes. Chris? Uh, yeah, because I think um, I think it would have been interesting if I had been born in '82, because then <clears throat> I could definitely tell people I was like a '90s kid or a late '80s and a '90s kid, and I'd have like a better memory of what those periods of time were like. You know, I think that would have been. I think that would have been interesting, but yeah, no, I've felt like that from time to time. Like maybe I was born in the wrong decade, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I I, I completely agree because I mean, I mean, I look at some of the music I listen to, um, the pop culture influence with Transformers, uh, GI Joe, even watching the cartoons. I, I I just feel like sometimes I was born, definitely born in the wrong decade because of my own morals that are that don't even line up with a lot of morals nowadays. Too on top of that and. And I mean, eighties they had some good. Eighties had some good, good moments, had some good times. And I think the music, the pop culture, all of that, I think, is one of those things. That I think that <clears throat> the movies and the movies too in the eighties. I I feel like I was definitely born in the wrong decade. Well, there's people out there that actually dress in a certain time period at home. Like there's people. I, there's I've seen one guy where he's living in the 1930s, so everything he has, from the clothes he wears to the furniture, appliances, everything is within the 1930s because um, they feel comfortable living in that certain time period and they re- and they enjoy it, but they don't have like 
the morals, ethics, and values to match up that time period. Because, you know, they're, they're with... And they have some modern technology, too, like a smartphone or a computer somewhere, you know, that kind of thing. I've seen a married couple where they have, like, a Victorian-era clothing and home. One lady I follow on uh, YouTube, she does, like, a 1950s mid-century feel where her appliances her furniture, the decor, her clothing, it's all from like the 50s and the early 60s. Mm-hmm. So because they they just really enjoy it and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if these people said that they also feel like they were born in the wrong time period. Right. But yeah, I understand what you're saying cuz sometimes I felt like that too, you know. And um and I just came to the conclusion where it's like, well, what if I just got certain kinds of like home decor furniture to match up the time period that I that I enjoy, you right. know? Because that way I can I can get kind of like the best of both worlds, you know, the modern time world yeah. that we're living in now, and it mixed in with a little bit of the decades that I feel like I should have been born into, you know. Or decades that are, or, you know, furniture and home decor and accessories of a certain period of time that I admire to decorate and to kind of show off and to make everything look nice, too. But, yeah, no, I completely understand what you're saying. But just remember that there are plenty of people in the world that do what they can to make it feel like they're living in a certain time period. Good point. Tyler, anything to piggyback off that, or...? Uh, not that I could think of, and I hope my brain doesn't tell me later that they're, that, like, I hope my brain doesn't, um, tell me, oh, yeah, you should have said this, because then I'll be like, damn it, but, um, but at any rate, um, not that I could think of at the moment, um, but, I mean, if I had to say anything, I do kind of, I do see where Chris is coming from, because, like, you know, because, like, you know, if I was, like, say, you know, born in, I don't know, um, 1990 or 91 or whatever, I probably would have seen, like, maybe I would have seen, like, The Phantom Menace with my parents. Um, yeah. And uh, that kind of thing as a child and truly start to grow up with Star Wars as a kid. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, it wasn't a perfect childhood, but I don't hate the one I got, um, because, you know, I I do feel blessed, you know, having the things that I did have, um, but sometimes I do feel like I would have been, you know, better if I was born either sooner or later or something like that, or, or maybe born in a a uh, time where um where um cuz i don't know how true this is but apparently you know every 100 years um the earth evolves and new sicknesses and viruses and whatnot you know uh are uh, kind of a thing i guess and it would be nice if i didn't live in an era in an era where uh where covid had to exist but i mean it is what it is and all we can do is make the best of a bad situation right i completely agree and uh for our final topic does ketchup go on steak and what is the what is the best way you think is to cook a steak i'm not an expert cook uh, chef or anything like that but i mean everyone's taste buds are different so if you want to if you want to use ketchup or some kind of a steak sauce on it that's fine that's your choice i don't give a shit but me personally i want some kind of a steak sauce to go with mine um i'm perfectly fine with having my steak medium rare that's how i like it i'm perfectly fine with that um i think that's how i have mine too but i could be wrong but, I mean, if you're someone that, for whatever reason, needs some kind of a 
uh, something else on the side to eat with your steak or whatever, that's fine. As long as you're eating something to keep going, that's all I give a shit about. Yeah, all right. Tyler? I mean, it's not like you're taking a piss on your steak and eating it, because now, right. now you're just crossing the line. Right, exactly. Yeah, like, I was watching this video on uh, on Facebook, some, this reel on Facebook, some person, right? I think I, sh- I shared it on my, on my, my, um, my wall. Someone took a steak, cut a hole in it, put an egg in it, like, literally in the steak, surrounded it with mac and cheese, milk, and then the the, the cheese sauce so- the the sauce from the 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 you no know, the powder from the mac and cheese, poured it around the steak, put about like um you know the stick of butter right they they cut up the butter and put it all on there and doused the steak with salt. Mm. I have what cooked. The fuck? And, oh, I have cooked. I have pan fried steaks. I, I have I have barbecued steaks. I have um, I even put steaks on the gas grill. But there's no way in fucking hell if I saw someone do that to my steak or if I ever found those people, I would slap them straight across the fucking head because that's not how you're <laughs> supposed to make a goddamn fucking steak with eggs. If you're going to make steak and eggs, you freaking pan fry the steak, you crack the egg right alongside it, and you cook, go to town. That's how you fucking do it. And then you serve it up with like... You know, hash browns on the side with sautéed mixed vegetables, orange juice and or a glass of milk, and maybe some fruit on the side. There you go. You got a pretty good breakfast right there. Fuck yeah. There you go. And for um, me, how sorry, I was, was, was going to say, I mean, it's like Chris said, everyone's taste buds are different, but if that same person is the same kind of person that would willingly think it's okay to put milk in the bowl before cereal, I'm sorry, you need to get help. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right, right. And, uh, I mean, the way I like my steak, medium rare, uh, seasoned. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, overall, that's, those are the only mini discussion topics I've had. I don't know if you guys want to go over anything. I know Chris wants, he has got a show to get to. Well, I do want to mention, uh, I forgot to say earlier, I did also order the third-party classified figure uh, Desert Rat from Valiverse that goes, that's compatible with G.I. Joe classified figures. Nice. So I just got an email this morning saying uh, a shipping label has been created and it's on the way. Fuck yeah, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Nice. Uh, yeah, take some photos. I, I like to see that because I, I looked. At, I've been looking at a couple of them. I saw the Sergeant Slaughter figure. I don't know whether wait for the classifieds, or maybe pick that up. I I don't know yet. But let me know. Well, I did I'm see somebody. a I did see a couple other ones that they're that they make that maybe I'll get next year for my birthday too to go alongside GI Joe because those ones are pretty good looking. The ones from Valiverse, the Action Force yep. figures, they call them. So, because as always, you know, the third party people make pretty good stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got to agree with that because, you know, because, because like the, uh, I mean, granted, I am selling them because I, I'm hoping to get the Mark 50 um, or the uh, the Medicom Mafex Mark 50 Iron Man. But, um, I mean, for. Is that diecast, by the way? This? I yeah. mean. No. I, no. I, I don't have the Mark 85. John has it. And, um, sorry. Um, I don't think that, I mean, well, he just said, uh, you said that it doesn't have die cast, right? It's got die cast in the feet. I think it's the only thing that's got die cast. Oh, the whole thing okay. looks like it's die cast. Cause, um, cause, uh, I have the Mafex Mark 43 and that doesn't have die cast, but I mean, it's still a good figure. Um, but honestly, I don't think I'm gonna pay those outrageous prices for the 45. I might just get a KO of it and spruce up the Tony face. I don't know yet, but, um, but um, I mean, uh, getting back on topic with the third party stuff, like I have a bought Takara Tonys, uh, all three Takara Tonys, uh, Mark 50 kit uh, kits, and. They are really good. Um, I've also bought his Thanos kit, and that's really good. So, 
So third party companies or sellers or whatever, they do make good stuff. Um, and especially, uh, and it, it's just a shame that sometimes we have to go with third party uh, companies like a certain someone's weapons. Um, but uh, it, it just sucks that sometimes we have to go to third party companies for stuff like that. But I mean, it is what it is. And I think we should, I mean, um, I don't know if it'd be more of a podcast topic or a political topic, but I feel like sometime down the line, it'd be interesting to, for us to talk about like the whole, you know, no guns with collectibles thing. Cause you know, I mean, I don't know. Th- that's just a little something off the top of my head. I mean, we could discuss about it, but, uh, We'll 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 talk we'll talk offline about that. We'll we'll try to we'll try to come up with an agreement r- with that regarding regarding with that because that could be taken so many different ways and stuff like that. Yeah. But, well, yeah. then again, just plastic guns. I mean, I bought like these uh, iron arm. I uh, know uh, was it grid uh, uh, grid iron uh, firearms with like just I think they're just resin. With uh, removable magazines, and they look they look really good. I mean, even on Commando Snake Eyes, looks really good. But um, but yeah, I think we hit everything tonight. Um, I think that that was all the notes I've had. Um, we will reconvene for our next episodes probably Saturday, uh, the very first Saturday of August. If there's no objections. No, let me just look at the calendar. Mm, not that I can think. Of. I don't think I have anything that Saturday, That's but I'll I'll August have to 6th. keep you po- August sixth. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'll I'll have to keep you guys postponed on my work schedule. Um. But I mean, so far that sounds perfect. But like I said, I'll, I'll have to uh keep you guys in, uh posted about that because because um um. Because uh, I mean I don't mind working that day, but the thing is, is I want to work during the time where we have this. Because, because John, I know you're going to Africa soon, and then I'll be starting school. And even when you come back, I'm sure I'll still be in school for graphic designing. And I just don't want, like, I want us to have, uh, I want to be able to have time to do this with you guys. Especially before, like I said, before you go to Africa and before I start school, because even when you come back, I don't know when I'll have time for it I mean, uh, it'll, with school. It'll, so. it'll be like it'll be like it'll be, like, it'll be always on the weekends when we do this. I mean, it'd be once well, every- yeah, but I mean, like you know, if I have like tests and homework and all that crap, so we'll, we'll definitely cross that bridge when we get to it. But when we do our final episode in September, which we haven't. I, I know. I think we've discussed a date, but we have to also get in touch with our guests, and we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do a roast, and we're gonna have yeah. uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have uh, uh, Jordan back on, and we're gonna do a roast, and we'll, we'll probably have a we'll have uh, some returning guests. Maybe we'll get Corey on too, but the roast will be mainly us three. I want it to be us three, and I want Jordan to deliver the roast, and I, I think it'd be fun, and I want people to have a good time. I want people to laugh. And it will be the probably the longest and the final outing of the F Team podcast in September. For we'll be on a hiatus. We'll be on that hiatus, but we'll still talk nerd stuff on the on the even 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 when I'm uh, abroad. You know, we'll be still talking to each other. We'll be still talking nerd stuff. And um, but yeah, I think that covers everything. I like to say a thank you to the team. Uh, to Mr. Jerky Man and Starpool himself. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to say thank you and shout outs to uh, uh, Figure Action Podcasts. If you guys want to listen to them, go listen to them. They're a great, great podcast team led by our, our friend Extra Zero and T Man, um, I think T Man 798. He does some reviews on YouTube too. Uh, shout out to Chris Brafter Studios uh, and uh, shout out to Jack in the Box James. Um, but yeah, shout out to those guys. Uh, if I missed anyone, I apologize. But still, shout out to all you. Shout out to some, shout out to the subscribers. Uh, if you guys like the show, if you guys want to be a guest, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Helps with the algorithm. Helps with the channel. 
Um, may, I do a, may I do a shout out or two? Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I mean, I kind of already did. Uh, well, you know, I, I probably kind of already did them earlier, but if you like train stuff, shout out to Train Boy. Go check that stuff out, whether you're into, uh, whether you're a Thomas and Friends fan or not, or you're just an overall train enthusiast. Go check him out. He has some really cool facts um, about real life events, whether some of the Thomas and Friends episodes were based on them or not. Um, and um, he's also got, you know, some cool modeling videos and that kind of thing. So if you're into this that kind of stuff, go check him out. And if you're, you know, a, a big fan of action figures, um, go check out the Foosh. He's uh, he's one of the best action figure reviewers, at least to me. Um, and also D Amazing for his uh, toy photography, because because honestly, I'm low key uh, uh, extremely jealous of him and uh, that kind of thing. But I uh, but he has all my respect. So. And uh, I would like to do a final shout out. Chris, do you have any okay. shout outs or not really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, oh, what the hell? Shout out to the guys from the TKO podcast. I've been listening to some of the early episodes on my spare time lately just for shits and giggles. So shout out to them and shout out to our boy Extra Zero from the Figure Action Podcast, a.k.a. Jordan. Um. Other than that, no, I don't have any other shout-outs, but um, yes, we will be back next month on our next podcast. I would like to do one more shout-out, and that is to the women of the F-Team podcast. You you ladies are the driving force for all of us to do better in our lives, and not only that, but hopefully to spend a meaningful future with you lovely ladies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and Bianca, if you're uh, if you're listening to this, um, like you know, after I send you the link, of course, um, I love you, babe. And uh, yeah, so um, also uh, I'm I'm planning on uh, doing more uploads in the near future for my YouTube channel. So check out my YouTube channel, Starpool295. Check out my Instagram. I'm planning to do more stuff with those uh, and. Uh, uh, more stuff on that in the near future. All right. Chris, anything else? Are you good? No, I'm good. I got to get going here. Westworld's about to start. Right, West, Westworld time. All right. Uh, thank you all for listening, checking in. Uh, and uh, you guys have a good rest of your month, and we will be back. And 